On the top of the hill, between the winds, stood the mysterious estate of the bright moon, its towers caressed by a golden haze in the morning, and at night they became lanterns among the stars. The cozy light of the moon enveloped the main character, who, immersed in carefree dreams, sailed on the waves of nightly adventures, where each dream was a gateway to the world of fantasies and mysteries. In the world of his dreams, it turned out that he was not alone, but next to him was a mysterious companion, whose eyes sparkled under the moonlight, like stars on their common journey. Waking up to the tender words about his wife, the main character slowly extended his hand to the girl lying next to her, whose eyes were also looking for answers in the mysterious symphony of the night. In the end, it turned out that the protagonist's sister, Jackson, was very frightened by the fact that her brother was molesting her, and her eyes reflected the anxiety awakened by the magic of the night. In tired confusion, Jackson could not see where his wife, Alice, had disappeared, or how he ended up in the same bed with his sister. Excitement and mysteries were hidden in the darkness of the night. The instant realization that he was in bed with his frightened sister made the guy quickly leave the room, trying to avoid awkward situations. He still could not come to his senses and understand what he was doing there, in that room where strange dreams, reality and disturbing memories were mixed. Now that his fate seemed sealed, he had to make the decision to leave the city bright, facing an unknown future where hope and fear mingled in a cocktail of unknown possibilities. Out of nowhere, the guy was suddenly hit right from behind, and he found himself in an insidious loop of events, where riddles were intertwined, just like a thread in a dark labyrinth. The stranger, towering over him at the moment of his fall, said that the guy runs too fast for a lazy person, as if solving other people's secrets in the very center of a mysterious incident. And at that very moment, lightning shattered the darkness, striking directly at the tree in the forest where the heroes were, cutting the night into dazzling moments of elemental frenzy. The stranger had completed his work, and now all he had to do was cover his tracks, like a shadow disappearing into the darkness of the night where the mystery of his real intentions lay hidden. Everything was put in place, the attacker of his wife's sister ended up dying in an accident, and now peace has returned to their lives, although the shadow of a secret continued to float in the air. The stranger could not know what kind of life Jackson had lived, but for such a mediocre and illiterate lazy person like him, being together with the Duke seemed dishonest and unforgivable. By his existence, he challenged the right of the legitimate heir to the throne, and therefore his sins were already attributed to him during his lifetime, as if a harbinger of dark changes. Although dying is also a worthy thing, it is only a pity that he did not manage to accomplish anything significant while alive, and now his opportunities have sunk into the abyss of missed moments. It is unclear for what reason, but suddenly some lightning began to emanate from the guy, as if his being had become a channel of inexplicable energy, awakening mysterious forces around him. It was at this time that someone, behind a screen, was virtually communicating on the internet, unaware that events in the real world were meanwhile becoming more and more mysterious and inexplicable. The guy, asking a rhetorical question about how much they liked what he did, added that this was just the beginning, as if hinting at even more mysterious events ahead. It was clear that he was clearly furious as he typed as if at the speed of light expressing his emotions in a stream of keys and making the internet tremble with unstoppable energy. And so, out of nowhere, like ball lightning, it appeared right in his room, like a manifestation of mysterious energy in which lies the key to the solution. Of course, the guy was at a loss, unable to understand what was happening, and his soul was enveloped in a slight degree of fear of an inexplicable phenomenon. And what's more, after a few seconds, his body suddenly became paralyzed, as if it had succumbed to the influence of an invisible force, making the situation even more mysterious. And then, for some unknown reason, he began to literally disappear, as if his essence was dissolving in the ether of a mysterious incident. A few seconds later he found himself in some incomprehensible space, where reality intertwined with fantasy, and time lost its ordinariness. Also, among other things, he felt like a ghost, because he could stick his hand right inside his body as if the boundaries of reality and illusion had become unclear. How someone spoke to him and congratulated him, noting his new state in which he had become part of something greater than just a physical being. The voice announced that the keyboard warrior account had been successfully created, and if the necessary conditions were met, the corresponding functions would be unlocked, 
as if he had become part of the unusual world of his own virtual existence. The guys still couldn't understand what was happening, and now they were still talking about some kind of keyboard warrior, as if he had become part of an incredible journey in a world where reality and virtuality had merged into one. The voice said that to unlock the functions, it is necessary to collect twelve ancient scriptures of unknown lands, each description corresponding to the F1 F12 keys, and activate the corresponding function, providing the guy with a new and mysterious challenge. Finally, the voice only wished good luck to the keyboard warrior, as if opening the doors of virtual adventures and challenges for the guy. And a moment later the guy began to move, it is unclear in what direction, as if he had become a participant in a virtual journey into unknown regions. At this time, Jackson watched as two men discussed something, and one of them confidently stated that at the moment it was possible to exclude the version of murder, leaving behind an article of a mysterious mystery. This moment revived Jackson, and he stood up abruptly, as if awakening from a meditative confusion to take part in new events. Of course, everyone present was scared, because the solution to the mystery seemed so close. But at the same time it still remained charmingly mysterious. The guy could not understand why these people were dressed so strangely and spoke Chinese that was unfamiliar to him, as if suddenly finding themselves in a parallel reality, full of unknown traditions and mysterious customs. As it turned out, the guy who found himself in an incomprehensible space moved into Jackson's body, creating even more mysteries in this confusing story. At this time, one of the men noticed that the eldest sister from the Chu clan was coming, adding a new element of intrigue and tension to the whirlwind of events. When the main character noticed them, he was struck by their beauty, as if his mind was stunned and the roof was almost blown away by the contemplation of this sudden attractiveness. One of the girls said that if the lightning did not kill Jackson, it means that God decided not to accept such a scum like him, leaving him in a world of mysteries and trials. As it turned out, the guy who ended up in Jackson's body had the exact same name, revealing a new round of mysterious fate and intertwining their names in an amazing dance of coincidences. The girl in the pink dress asked her friend to tone down the conversation slightly, reminding her that he was her husband after all creating a moment of awkwardness in the unexpected mixture of relationships and changes. Jackson couldn't believe that this loser had a wife, as if reality was revealing another mystery to him that he had to solve. Everyone around was discussing Alice's beauty, creating an atmosphere filled with feelings of envy, admiration and disbelief in front of her amazing appearance. It is unclear for what reasons, Jackson literally began to instantly fall to his knees in front of Alice as if under the influence of an unknown force or sudden excitement. Those present could not understand why Jackson was behaving this way, because only a couple of hours had passed since the wedding, and he no longer recognized his own wife, creating a vague feeling of bewilderment and anxiety around him. Explaining that he is not a henpecked man who makes his wife worry, Jackson joked, trying to defuse the situation and add lightness to an uncertain moment. The girl quickly calmed the guy down, and reminded him not to let his hands go, because they were in the wrong position, creating a comic situation in a moment filled with unexpected funny nuances. Alice could not understand what experience he was talking about, because there seemed to be no problems or noticeable disagreements in their relationship. Then Jackson began to pester his subordinate Alice. Lolita, that was the name of Alice's subordinate, immediately followed her mistress, as if the employee was on duty, ready to carry out any instruction. Jackson was very tired, because Lolita didn't even bother to help him, creating the impression that the service was just a formality for her. Jackson was very infuriated by the fact that Lolita told them to go, because he didn't even get up, causing internal seething and irritation in front of an incomprehensible situation. His nerves could not stand it, and he flew into the carriage like a bullet, as if an internal explosion instantly led him to decisive action. Entering the carriage, he sat down on a comfortable sofa to rest, like a quiet oasis of calm in the turmoil of incomprehensible events. And right at that moment he smiled very much, looking at Alice, as if a bright and joyful mood had shown in his inner world. Alice told Lolita to let him stay in the carriage, as if showing care and attention to the tired Jackson, creating a moment of warmth in the situation. She asked Jackson to stop peeking as if drawing his attention to the boundaries of his personal sphere and respect for privacy. It honestly made him laugh, and she seemed ashamed of her reaction, 
creating an unexpected moment of laughter and embarrassment in their interaction. When Jackson asked if they were late in Lolita Lands, she was surprised because she couldn't believe he knew about them, creating a mysterious moment of misunderstanding. Alice advised him that whatever he heard about these lands, he should never ask again, as if warning him against secrets that could change his life. The carriage set off and drove home, carrying with it mysterious characters and mixed feelings that are ready to be revealed ahead. When they arrived, Jackson could not understand why he was not allowed to enter through the front door, as if faced with an invisible barrier that upset and confused him. Lolita explained that only family members can enter through the front door, and he, as a temporary guest, only takes his wife living in the house. If he does not want to spoil the mood, he should enter through the side door, creating a moment of awareness of the rules and nuances of behavior in this home. In response to his harsh words about Lolita's tongue being like a poisonous snake, he inevitably faced a well-deserved blowback that revealed to him the true power of words. However, the hitch was that Lolita didn't even touch him with a finger, and he felt an emptiness, as if a whirlwind of time was carrying his desires into unknown distances. Alice firmly made it clear that, despite all the difficulties, she should treat him with respect, since he was still her lawful husband. Alice suggested not to waste time because their father and mother had been waiting for them for a long time. Jackson felt the joy of seeing that at least his wife was treating him with kindness, and that small joy made his days brighter. But Jackson's joy came to an abrupt end when he received something from his wife that changed the course of his thoughts and made his heart beat with anxiety. Lolita told him in shock that he had committed a terrible act at night, and now, as if nothing had happened, he behaved calmly. The protagonist's wife, Alice, decided to find out what punishment his father and mother were preparing for him. Having almost forgotten about this hellish incident, he needs to find free time to develop a strategy and unravel this hot tangle of events. Looking at his reflection in the water, he realized that it was no wonder why they looked at him with disgust. Because of the damn lightning, he looked not at all human. And right at that moment, as he was staring at his reflection, someone suddenly crept up behind him and kicked him forcefully into the water, causing him to lose his balance and burst into waves of bewilderment. Of course, within a split second, Jackson was falling uncontrollably, finding himself suddenly immersed in the freezing waters of the lake. Jackson was dumbfounded, trying to figure out what was wrong, and came to the conclusion that it was all because of that high-profile incident. It seemed that someone from the family decided to arrange an accident in order to get rid of him as a son-in-law. Oddly enough, Jackson immediately began calling for help. Seeing Lolita in front of him, for some reason he briefly thought that she was trying to take his life, or maybe his wife was allied with her in a conspiracy, conspiring against him, as if in the pages of passionate love novels. Jackson decided that the smartest thing to do would be to pretend to be dead at this point, in the hopes that it would help him solve the mysteries and unravel the intrigue around him. Lolita was only surprised at how quickly he seemingly died, and he continued to subtly play his role as an innocent dead man. And then Lolita, succumbing to the temptation of curiosity, decided to check whether he was dead, or simply lost consciousness from an intriguing incident. Of course, the next step was to pull Lolita into the water with him, in the hope of exposing her and understanding how deep this family conspiratorial vortex goes. To be honest, this decision was very strange on the part of the guy. So, on top of that, he didn't just pull her, but held her right under the water, revealing a new chapter in this complicated family intriguing scenario. Lolita, understanding the danger, desperately struggled, trying to somehow avoid the crazy guy who was holding her underwater. Lolita suddenly decided that she needed to grab a tree branch to escape her precarious situation in the water. To be honest, it was clear on Jackson's face that he didn't fully understand what to do, because he simply stubbornly held Lolita underwater, and only in desperation did she decide to grab a tree branch to save herself. When Lolita lay unconscious, Jackson enjoyed looking at her eyelashes and said that if she were dumb, her beauty would be priceless. Realizing that someone in this clan wanted him dead, Jackson decided that it was too dangerous to stay here, but this world was completely unknown to him, he had no knowledge of history, and besides, the owner of this body committed a vile act, so attempting to escape would doom him. Assuming that the enemy had used the accident to kill him in order to hide his intentions, Jackson realized that no one would dare attack him openly, 
and decided that he should take the risk and unravel the secrets of this world. In the end, Jackson finally decided to check whether Lolita was actually dead, realizing that in this world you cannot trust a single sign without additional verification. To the guy's surprise, Lolita's heart did not beat, and he realized that the situation could be much more complicated than he had imagined. Realizing that he needed to act quickly, because he had absolutely no idea what to do if she actually died, he rushed to find a way to bring her back to life. When Alice appeared, Jackson asked her if she would believe him if he said that he was trying to save Lolita, recognizing the need for explanations and preparing for explanations. When Alice began to use some healing techniques, Jackson was amazed to realize that his wife turned out to be a martial artist, which earned him unexpected respect and surprise. As it turned out, it was too late to teach Jackson this process, since his skeleton had already formed and his natural characteristics were completely unsatisfactory for this type of healing. After this, Alice recalled that she asked Jackson to call her mistress, expressing her dominance and demanding respect. And soon it really worked. Lolita began coughing up water, confirming that Alice's efforts had led to a positive result. Now Jackson didn't understand anything at all. Because if the maid didn't try to kill him, then who was behind all this? One way or another he shouldn't ruin his relationship with Alice or others. Alice asked Lolita if everything was as the guy told about the incident, trying to clarify the circumstances and find out the true picture of what happened. Standing up, Alice invited both of them, who were wet, to rinse off and change clothes, so that they could then start dinner, carefully providing comfort and care for them after the incident. When Jackson suggested that they have to change clothes together, this caused Lolita to become furious expressed in her reaction to the proposal. At this time, for some reason, Jackson decided to eavesdrop on Alice's conversations, standing right next to the window, trying to catch what they were talking about. The smile on his face was extremely sinister and mysterious, causing those around him a feeling of bewilderment and anxiety. When the guy heard talk that he was behaving strangely, because before he was submissive, but today something had changed in him, he became slightly wary feeling dissatisfaction and bewilderment around him. Alice also noticed that something was wrong with him and suggested that it could be the effects of a lightning strike manifested in his strange behavior and changes in personality. Alice explained her decision regarding yesterday's incident by saying that it seemed very strange and therefore she could not make a final decision until she consulted her parents. Lolita noted that the guy was lucky that the lightning did not take his life. Otherwise Alice would not have had to waste time on him, expressing her surprise that he survived. And just at that moment, Jackson entered, knocking down the door, creating the impression of a forceful invasion and creating a tense atmosphere in the room. Yawning demonstratively in front of the girls, he noticed that it was dark and windy outside, and such weather always made him sleepy, adding a pinch of carelessness to his words. He explained his visit by saying that the husband and wife, in his opinion, should sleep together, creating an unexpected situation and leaving the girls in a state of embarrassment and bewilderment. And he instantly received a slap in the face from Alice, expressing her dissatisfaction and indignation at his unacceptable behavior. The blow was really strong, for the guy could not stand on his feet, emphasizing Alice's strength and determination in dealing with indecent behavior. Lolita laughed and noticed that the guy was nothing if he even dared to dream of a night with their mistress expressing his disdain and ridicule. Everything was clear to Jackson now, realizing that his actions had caused certain reactions in the girls, and he realized that he was facing consequences for his behavior. Realizing that the previous owner of this body had not maintained a close relationship with Alice, Jackson decided to develop a new strategy. While his so-called wife clearly did not want this information to spread, forcing him to reconsider his behavior and plans. To Alyssa's surprise, Jackson stood up abruptly and smiled mysteriously, suddenly changing his behavior and creating a mysterious impression. Unexpectedly for everyone, Jackson began to sharply shout that where had it been seen that a wife refused to sleep with her husband, creating an unexpected scandal and tension in the situation. Alice couldn't stand it and literally shut his mouth, telling him to shut up, interrupting his cries and trying to restore calm in the room. Jackson, to be honest, was a little nervous he did not expect such a reaction and realized that his impulsive actions only aggravated the tension of the situation. The main character said that if she does not want to sleep with him, 
then how can there be any talk of any kind of relationship, and that tomorrow he is going to go out and spread this information throughout the clan, emphasizing his determination and openness in action, and when the time comes, they will find out which of the two will lose more reputation, emphasizing that this situation could have consequences for both and will become a kind of test of their social status. His reputation was already at an end, and he had nothing to fear, by the way, she had nothing to fear either, thus, he intended to convey to all the young gentlemen that she was pure and blameless. Turning around, Alice asked if he really wanted to sleep with her, expressing her bewilderment and demanding clarity in this ridiculous situation. On the outside, Jackson calmly confirmed that this was true, but on the inside he was shocked, because he did not expect her to agree to such a proposal, expressing his inner surprise and unpreparedness for her positive answer. Alice stated that he would be with Lolita tonight, making a decision and pointing out the need for respect and devotion in a relationship. Of course, such news that the girl and the guy were in complete shock, causing surprise and unpreparedness for such a turn of events. Lolita decided to ask if Alice was joking, expressing her uncertainty and desire to understand how serious her words were. Alice asked what was the matter and if Lolita had any objections, showing interest and willingness to listen to her point of view. Alice said that today, while he was saving her, he probably managed to touch her wherever possible, adding that she is a concubine maid, and this is part of her duties, expressing irony and sarcasm. The protagonist felt incredibly confused when faced with the mysterious custom of sending another woman to bed with her husband, and his mind wove a puzzle of questions, revealing mystical traditions in which habits became alien and mysterious. Lolita suddenly burst into tears admitting that she did not want to give up anything, and then added that Alice seemed to be being too kind to her, causing her to cry with mixed feelings. Jackson, who decided that the girl's lack of embarrassment could be his advantage, decided to support their game and see which of them would give up first, since the years had not made a bet here. While Jackson played his game, Alice was lost and thought about who in their clan could be a spy, and prayed with horror that it was not Lolita. The guy looked dead, and the reasons for this condition remained mysterious, creating a fog of misunderstanding around what could have led him to such a depressing state. Lolita expressed the opinion that she had always considered the guy worthless, but now realized that, apparently, she overestimated him, underestimating his actions and qualities. It suddenly became clear that Jackson seemed to be more than just a man, calling into question the idea of his gender and adding to the mystery of his personality. The main character, naturally, found himself in complete misunderstanding, unable to understand what was happening and why these events were developing with him in the leading role. Jackson walked out into the street naked, causing mixed reactions from those around him and leaving behind a whirlwind of questions about his strange act. It didn't matter to him how difficult the level in the game was, he would definitely find a way out, but what he needed to do remained a mystery hanging in the air. He believed that if he died it would be the end of the world, convinced that things couldn't get any worse. Approaching from behind, the man said that his impotence was caused by a prohibition spell cast by other people. It was terrible, but, according to him, it could be corrected. Jackson instantly peered into the secrets of his past, trying to figure out who could be the initiator of such a spell, and a wave of questions grew in his mind, threatening to shake his stability. The man did not know who exactly cast this spell on him, but he definitely remembered that it had been cast in childhood because it was now that such a symptom as impotence appeared. As for solving the man's problem, the seal is located in a very vulnerable place, so it cannot be removed by external forces without causing internal damage. Of course, Jackson had no choice, and he immediately began to beg the man to help him solve this problem. The man told him that only he could help himself by becoming a great master and cultivating his chi. The main character, desperate and hopeless, decisively came to the conclusion that it was easier to disappear from life than to fight the unknown secrets and difficulties that tormented his essence. But the man asked him not to rush, claiming that the guy has one method that will suit him. This method, although a little strange, involves enduring the beatings. The more serious the beatings, the easier it will be to make a breakthrough. Jackson, realizing the persistence of the old man, who was ready to transfer the ancient technology to him without any return, decided to accept this offer, realizing that he had nothing to lose. The last time the man asked the guy if he wanted to become stronger, to which he received a positive answer. Finally, 
The man handed him a mysterious scroll, like an ancient parchment, containing secrets and instructions that were supposed to help the guy in his quest to become stronger. The man explained his help by saying that he had very little time to live, and he did not want such a wonderful technique to go to the grave with him, so he gave it to Jackson. After so many years, he managed to find a suitable vessel, and once he reaches the level of a great master, he intends to get rid of his cursed eunuch body. Of course, this whole intriguing turn of events forced Jackson to reassess the situation, and the gloom of suspicion hung over him, like a persistent shadow of questions and secrets. And right at that moment, Jackson was asked to activate the keyboard, as if opening up a new path for him in this mysterious story. When he gave a positive answer, the scroll he received began to be rapidly absorbed, as if revealing a new stage of the mysterious process. Corresponding to the absorption of the scroll, the keyboard began to merge, creating the impression that they were interacting in an amazing tandem, opening up unexpected vistas for Jackson. Out of nowhere, a miniature girl suddenly announced that the first description had been received and the F2 key had been activated, introducing an element of mystery and surprise into what was happening. She also said that the Rage Point system has been activated and the lottery feature has been successfully unlocked, revealing new possibilities in this amazing story. Jackson decided to check if he was in some strange dream, and literally began to strangle this girl in order to feel the reality of events and find out what was happening. Of course, she was in pain, and she began to beat the guy, crying out for him to let her go, introducing an element of tension and surprise into this strange moment. Due to the fact that he has activated the keyboard functions for the first time, he is given the opportunity to use the lottery game three times for free. The probability of winning prizes will be high, and their rank will be unlimited. Of course, Jackson was delighted with such a gift especially considering that he was new to this strange world of possibilities and secrets. Using an item from the lottery, Jackson transformed the pain from the rich woman into pleasure, although the damage level remained unchanged. However, with fatal damage, the blocking effect took effect when the last drop of blood was spilled. The main character decided that he wanted to try his luck in the lottery again. On his second attempt at the lottery, the protagonist has much better luck when he ends up with a poison dagger adding an element of danger and mystery to his adventures. To be fair, the girl laughed when the guy suggested that this poison dagger was the 999th option, adding a fun twist to the plot. She laughed when the guy suggested that the dagger with poison had 999 options, and then began to tell that this dagger was cursed. Once in a battle, someone mechanically licked it, and that person died instantly. It was enough to receive the slightest wound from this dagger to die. Demonstratively showing that the guy was going to lick the dagger, he asked what kind of fool would agree to such a reckless action. But suddenly Jackson realized that he had almost licked this dagger, which added urgency and danger to the situation. Having received such an unusual gift, the main character decided that he wanted to try his luck in the lottery again. Unfortunately, the guy found out that his free lottery was completed, which caused disappointment and added a note of surprise to the turn of events. Jackson felt an inner rage because he wanted so badly to play the lottery again. Jackson couldn't understand why he didn't have any rage points, because he believed that Lolita must be the source of accumulating these points. And then at one moment the realization of something important came to him, as if the solution began to become clearer in his mind. He realized that he had just allowed the system to absorb the scroll, and now his little friend's happiness became meaningless and all previous efforts became meaningless in his eyes. But then some kind of realization came to the guy again, as if a new ray of light had penetrated the darkness of his thoughts. He began to press the keys and cry out, demanding relief from impotence, as if trying to find a solution to his personal problems in this unusual world. As it turned out, an ancient description opened before the guy, providing him with new knowledge and possibly answers to his tormenting questions. He was informed that his body had absorbed the original chi and this was the cultivation system in this world, revealing to him new aspects of the nature of his existence. He was informed that his body had absorbed the original chi and this was the cultivation system in this world, revealing to him new aspects of the nature of his existence. And opposite this internal energy, for unknown reasons, Jackson decisively hit the tree standing next to him, as if splashing out his new strength. However, after a split second, he screamed, experiencing acute pain, 
as if his action, despite the energy, led to unexpected consequences. Afterwards, he repeated several times that it hurt like hell, realizing that his energy may be powerful, but not limitless in its defense. Still, he agreed that this system was somewhat useful, as it reflected his cultivation level, giving him some control over the process of his internal development. However, this seemingly insignificant method does require patience and perseverance in the face of pain and difficulty. Having tried to deliberately harm himself several times, Jackson discovered that the result was weak. The golden-colored energy practically did not increase. Apparently, he was consciously preparing for pain, and his body was already at the subconscious level ready to accept the energy. It seems that the masochistic method is doomed to failure. Right at that moment, a red-haired girl burst into the room, suddenly appearing and disturbing Jackson's peace. With surprise, the guy asked if she was his wife's sister, trying to unravel the mystery of this girl who had suddenly appeared. The girl was seething with indignation, unable to find an explanation for why Alice had not yet punished him, and her eyes sparkled with the fire of misunderstanding. Jackson completely ignored her words, enraptured by her charm and cuteness despite her indignation and irritation. Charlotte, who turned out to be the girl's name, poured out ten points of her indignation on the guy, while he, perhaps, only caught the beauty of her name. He was really shocked that he received these glasses. The girl's temper gave the impression that he did not have to restrain himself and avoid being overly cautious in their interactions. Jackson wondered, puzzled, why Charlotte was hesitant to change her name when he felt it would be entirely justifiable. It turned out that the girl was striving to change her name, but faced resistance from her parents, like her sister, who, ignoring the opinions of others, still fulfilled her desire. Charlotte did not come for friendly conversations. Her intention was to end misunderstandings and settle scores, which created tension in the air. The girl was furiously outraged that the guy was belittling the seriousness of the situation, calling it a misunderstanding, while he unceremoniously invaded her personal space. Jackson was surprised why she did not stop his act and did not call the guards. In addition, he claimed that he was not interested in her because he considered her too young. Jackson was surprised why she didn't stop him and call the guards. He also stated that he was not interested in her because he considered her too young. Hearing that the girl had small fists, Jackson prepared himself to withstand the blows from those small, but probably determined fists. However, having felt the moment of the blow, he suddenly realized that he was mistaken, and instead of the expected aggression, he saw in her gesture a different expression of the inevitability of his guilt. The blow was so strong that the guy literally slammed into the floor. His body instantly submitted to the force of the blow, creating the image of an unfortunate fall. Jackson couldn't figure out what had just happened, his mind feeling hazy in the confusion of the mysterious event. Charlotte, with a sarcastic grin, asked what he imagined, as if mocking his arrogance and conceit. Then, she whistled sharply, as if summoning an unknown force and at that moment Jackson realized that the situation had become even more mysterious and tense. He became curious as to what kind of man would agree to this girl being called a sycophant, and a shadow of doubt arose in his mind about her strange preferences. As it turned out, the sycophant was not a male figure, but a giant dog, which led to embarrassment and a surprised look from Jackson. Just like its owner, the giant dog was enraged, and its anger was as obvious as the girl's. Having no other option... Jackson simply decided to run away, leaving behind only traces of an unexpected and ridiculous adventure. While the girl was helping the giant dog, she ordered Jackson to jump over the table, creating a scene where chaos and comedy were intertwined. In the soul of the main character there was a glimmer of hope for the opportunity to break away from the dog and avoid the protracted scenario of this ridiculous event. And then, the moment came when the dog finally made up his mind and rushed at the guy suddenly turning the scene into a tense moment of action. Here Jackson thought it was all over, waiting for the dog's inevitable attack, filling the air with a feeling of helplessness. But at that moment he remembered the keyboard and began to press the B key, trying to find a way out or an answer to an old situation. It was at this moment that unimaginable things began to happen. Mysterious forces penetrated the scene, raising additional questions to the already unusual situation. And literally a split second after that, the attack was not carried out by the dog, but by Jackson himself, creating a complete revolution in the script, leaving everyone in bewilderment. Charlotte couldn't believe it. The sycophant died unexpectedly, 
and it left her bewildered and shocked. Jackson was happy at that moment, because he managed to unexpectedly kill the dog, and this brought him some satisfaction after a tense conflict. Of course, the girl was not in a good mood and warned that she was going to take revenge for the sycophant, filling the air with a new wave of tension. And at that very moment she hit the guy with a whip, turning a moment of joy from victory into a wave of pain and surprise. The girl who gave her the lament whip used it to hit the guy, and now his pain increased ten times, showing that not everyone is able to withstand such a test. The main character could not understand why he had such a depressing fate. The need to endure pain in order to advance to the next level remained a mystery to him. Charlotte invited the guy to make a bet. He should withstand three of her blows without making a sound, and in return she would forgive him for killing her dog. Jackson only asked for time so he could prepare for this challenge. Jackson decided to use the item that he got in the lottery, but he could not figure out how to properly use this artifact. Having prepared himself, he announced that he was ready for the test, after which the attention of those gathered was intensely riveted on the upcoming event. The girl then struck the first blow, beginning the test, and at that moment everyone held their breath, waiting for Jackson's reaction. To be honest, he was pleased that he could barely restrain his groans, creating an interesting tension around what was happening. The girl, in turn, thought he was in pain and asked him not to hold back his screams, adding an unexpected element to this strange moment. But besides, the guy put his foot down and invited her to continue, telling her to strike again. Charlotte couldn't believe that there was a person who could withstand the pain of a whip, and her surprise only increased as she watched the guy's endurance. But Jackson really felt indescribable satisfaction from all this, creating unpredictable dynamics in what was happening. Charlotte was already considering the fact that her whip was seemingly broken when faced with an unexpected turn of events. Standing up, Jackson asked if he really had one, leaving a questioning tension in the air. Charlotte asked to have the whip tested on her, creating a twist where she herself became the subject of the test. Jackson was surprised that she allowed the whip to be tested on her adding an unexpected twist to their encounter. Jackson only asked to hold on tighter, emphasizing his readiness for a new test, which could be a continuation of their strange duel. Here Charlotte learned from her own experience that the whip was fully functional, adding to the mystery of the outcome of this unusual scene. The girl did not understand why the guy did not utter a single cry, which caused her surprise and bewilderment at this unexpected stamina. Lolita believed that with such wounds the guy would not survive and would prefer that he die at the hands of the young mistress. If it acts on its own, traces may remain. In complete darkness, illuminated by a single candle, Lolita wrote some kind of letter, creating a mysterious atmosphere around her actions. In complete darkness, by the light of a single candle, Lolita wrote a letter to the young master in which she assured him of her innocence before Alice, promised to eliminate Jackson, anticipating good news in the near future but acknowledged the emergence of doubts and insisted that he begin the task as soon as possible. Rhetorically speaking to the dove, the girl asked him to hurry up, creating a mysterious image, as if the bird could speed up something important and mysterious. The girl was curious about what the guy was up to, expressing interest in his plans and creating an atmosphere of intrigue. Her curiosity was awakened by how long the guy had been washing his hands, she asked herself the question, as if trying to uncover the secret of his long washing. By explaining that luck does not come naturally, he revealed his approach to the situation, creating an aura of dedication and perseverance around himself. Holding a vague object in his hand, Jackson said that wealth and fame are useless if you are a loser, expressing his views on the true value of success and self-fulfillment. Jackson decided that he wanted to try his luck at the lottery again, expressing his desire to experience chance and the opportunity to change his fate. Jackson was already beginning to feel the effect, as if something unusual or exciting was beginning to affect his condition. He called the pill that the girl gave him a good thing, expressing his satisfaction or satisfaction with the result obtained. Jackson decided to try the pill anyway, emphasizing his willingness to take risks or explore new things that could affect his condition. Then an indescribable effect occurred, as if he was being torn into small particles creating an atmosphere of mystery and unknown influence around him. A light flashed on the control panel. The system joyfully reported that her natural abilities had been improved, as if the internal code was filled with new energy, ready for adventure. In the golden halls of his duchy, the Duke of Bright Moon, the head of the clan, rules the city among three children, 
two daughters and an heir son, who, orphaned at an early age, was raised by his aunt and uncle, and despite his worthlessness and reputation as a slacker, grew up to be a real handsome. Jackson wondered why the richest bright moon duchy took him, such a nonentity, as a son-in-law. I couldn't help but think that this was part of some secret plan. Jackson's morning began not with aromatic coffee, but with refreshing water that poured generously on his face, bringing wakefulness with the first rays of the sun. Michael, pouring water over Jackson, did not understand why he was trying to look like the boss, but did not express his thoughts out loud. Michael teased Jackson by lightly hitting him on the shoulder, provoking him to hit back, but Jackson stood his ground, avoiding getting involved in the fight. Michael didn't seem to expect Jackson to strike, but at that moment, in surprise, he realized that it had actually happened. After this, Michael, angry, made a threat, promising to give Jackson hell and even threatening to kill him. At just the right moment, the commander entered the room, breaking up a tense moment that could have led to further conflicts. Michael, as if carefully explaining to the commander that he had woken up the guy, suddenly hit him right in the face accompanying this gesture by breaking his nose. To be honest, the commander was amazed that the guy survived despite the severe whip wounds that became apparent during the incident. The commander ordered his subordinates to bring a stretcher for the young master, showing concern for his condition after the unexpected incident. At this time, Jackson defiantly made sounds of pain, emphasizing the severity of the injuries he received in front of the attentive gaze of others. Within seconds, Jackson was lying on a stretcher, confirming the seriousness of his condition and his readiness to receive emergency medical attention. Lucy was present in the room, and Jackson immediately noticed that the depravity of this girl was an integral feature that did not escape his attention. Lucy, with an attentive look, inquired of Jackson if he knew exactly why he was in this place, and what led to his unpleasant situation. He said, as if with pride, that, of course, he knew, because he had managed to get into bed with his wife's sister. The girl flushed with rage, not understanding how he dared to speak to her in such a smug tone, distorting her patience to the limit. He, realizing his cruelty, understood that he deserved punishment, and the young lady, sharing his repentance, personally used the whip, after which he received her forgiveness. Lucy's husband suggested dropping the case, given that Charlotte had already personally punished him for his action. Their brother said that there were already many rumors about how this boy managed to win both sisters, their clan had always been famous for its severity, and if they did not take decisive action now, it would not only set a bad example for the younger generation, but also harm the reputation of the clan. The man stated that he believed Charlotte, claiming that nothing happened between her and the guy, but admitted that the other clans likely wouldn't trust that claim so easily. The father was furious when Charlotte came to them and demanded that they leave their house immediately. The mother begged the girl not to listen to her father and to share with her the details of what happened. She told her mother how it all happened, confirming that she had used the whip on the guy last night because of his actions. Even in the midst of her sadistic nature, the girl emphasized that despite everything, she remains true to her word and principles. The man told his niece that she was still too young, and her reputation as an unmarried girl was extremely important to the reputation of their clan. Alice expressed surprise wondering how her husband could endure such a thing, considering that the whip increased the pain tenfold. The man, being furious, noticed that everyone knew about the power of the whip, and expressed fear that no one present would be able to withstand eight blows, and he was curious how the guy managed it. Michael, whose nose Jackson struck, once again emphasized that he received the injury from the guy. Now everything became clear to the man. Jackson took advantage of Charlotte's kindness, he emphasized that she seemed to show mercy because of her kind heart when she punished him. The man hoped that his brother would punish him properly. Charlotte struggled to prove that she actually stabbed him eight times. Upon entering the hall, the subordinate reported that the girl outside had created a lot of noise, insisting on meeting her son-in-law. She, representing the Red Court, clearly carried influence and responsibility for her words standing persistently in front of the hall and demanding a meeting with her son-in-law. Lucy flared up with rage upon learning of the situation and ordered the girl to be let in, demanding an explanation. Since the guy was able to survive severe injuries, Lolita prepared something else for him. In the twilight, framed by a haze of mystery, against the background of music sounding in a smooth rhythm, a mysterious woman suddenly appeared, 
shrouded in an aura of mystery, like a character from an unknown world. In a whirlwind of fate, realization pierced her like an instant ray of light in a dark room. She realized that the magic of the night had led her to him, the one she was looking for. Immediately descending on him, she began talking uncontrollably, reminding him of his promise to return and accept her into his clan, while not forgetting to mention that he had even provided her with a certain amount of money. Flushing with anger, Lucy sharply expressed her emotions and demanded an explanation, asking the question, how should all these promises and money that he provided be understood? Jackson assured that he would immediately clarify the whole situation, preparing Lucy for revelations that could change her view of what was happening and the future in their relationship. The main character expressed his curiosity, wanting to know the girl's name, creating a moment of anticipation and mystery in the air. In a graceful gesture of politeness, Jackson specified how much he should pay for the girl's services, showing tact in a question that could change the tone of the entire conversation. After careful calculation, the girl reported that the amount owed was 30 silver coins, adding a certain amount of surprise and mystery to the atmosphere of the conversation. At this time, the men discussed that the young man's taste was clearly different and could cause mixed reactions, adding a note of humor and ease to the conversation. Jackson, despite the young man's taste in question, offered to generously triple the amount, providing 300, of which the remainder were to go to the engagement ceremony, adding a romantic note to the conversation. Lucy's husband asked her to wait a little, leaving unspoken expectations and mysterious moments in the air that could change the course of their conversation. Without any falsehood and with respect, Jackson, realizing his financial difficulties, turned to his wife with a request to lend him 300, which introduced a new element of reality into their conversation. Lolita, addressing everyone present, could not imagine how everyone could so easily accept the fact that Alice agreed to the proposal, creating a degree of bewilderment and intrigue in their discussion. Jackson began his story by sharing the story of how his former concubine could not stand the difficulties in the military camp and ran away but expressed confidence that Alice would be able to cope with the tasks assigned to her. Jackson explained that his wife had given his former concubine to the army, but she found it difficult to entertain the soldiers every night, introducing a new element of complexity into the story and leaving questions up in the air. Alice, showing her determination, ordered the servants to take the girl to a military camp, bringing intrigue to the scene and emphasizing her authority in this situation. Of course, the girl expressed her opposition to such an idea, introducing a note of resistance and creating new difficulties in the course of their plans. And so, abruptly and unexpectedly for everyone, the girl turned to Michael, adding excitement to the atmosphere and introducing new dynamics into their discussion. With a confession on her face, she announced that Michael had planned this whole idea and it was he who told her to do this, revealing her cards and throwing everyone present into confusion. Immediately after uttering these words, she immediately received a strong blow to the face, as if disagreement with the disclosure of the secret was expressed in a harsh answer. Michael flared up in uncontrollable rage, his anger thundering through the air, creating a tense atmosphere and an unexpected turn in the course of events. The man approached Michael and, relying on his good-heartedness, asked if what was said was true, introducing an element of doubt into the situation. The girl began to explain that Michael gave her twenty silver coins and ordered her to come here so that she would report this, revealing to everyone the details of their insidious plan. Of course, Michael immediately fell to his knees, begging for forgiveness, creating a sudden twist in the script and showing his unexpected vulnerability. But Michael admitted that he was ordered to do it by someone else, adding a mysterious element to the events and raising new questions in the air. Lolita, attentive and alert, at that time began to closely monitor what was happening, emphasizing her vigilance in this situation. Michael began to explain that at that time he could not clearly see this person, making clarifications and trying to justify himself to those around him. Michael revealed that the man was talking to him from the other side of the wall and bribed him to carry out this action, exposing the secret conspiracies and intrigues to everyone. The man decided that no one would continue the past events, and no one would discuss it in the future trying to put an end to the complex intrigues and maintain peace in the relationship. Lucy didn't agree that they would just let Jackson go, expressing her doubts and objections, creating a new turn in the conversation. Well, of course not, because Jackson got involved in all sorts of dirty deeds. 
To prevent future troubles, he will be sent to study at Bright Moon Academy, imposing a strict condition on his future fate. Now the girl agreed with this, because then he would at least be able to help the clan as an accountant or something similar, finding a way to make a useful contribution to their common cause. Jackson decided not to bother too much with the academy, but to play the lottery first. He did not even expect that he would accumulate 1646 rage points, opening up new opportunities and turning the plot in an unexpected direction. Suddenly, Charlotte ran up to him with a storm of joy, adding a touch of surprise and possible fun in the upcoming events to the plot. He couldn't understand what she was doing here, and confusion flashed in his eyes, confronting him with a new secret or twist in their plot. To the surprise of perhaps the guy himself, she came to apologize, creating a sudden resolution and trying to restore peace in their relationship. According to their argument, she decided to forget about what happened that night, but today she failed to protect him and he was even punished for what happened, adding a new twist and incredible tension to their story. He said it was normal because she was still a child and had no say in the family, adding contrast to the situation and raising questions about power and relationships in their society. Charlotte was bursting with anger when the guy called her a child, creating internal tension and emphasizing her desire to recognize her independence and adulthood. In the future, when he got to the academy, the girl promised to protect him if anyone tried to bully him, he just had to tell her, adding a new element of support and protection to their relationship. A few minutes later, Jackson suddenly and very loudly sneezed, creating a sudden comic moment that added lightness to their surroundings. He won a lottery bottle of poison that can cause everyone within a small area to become paralyzed and powerless, adding an element of intrigue and danger to the plot. At this time, a stranger ran up to the guy, creating uncertainty and mystery in their communication, which could affect the course of events. He then asked if the guy had a cold and offered him thicker clothes, showing concern and creating additional opportunities for the plot to develop. As it turned out, it was his servant and fellow student, revealing an unexpected connection and adding an element of intimacy and support to their relationship. Jackson once again asked to repeat what the guy called him, showing interest and possible misunderstanding in connection with what had happened. And, following Jackson's instructions, the guy called him Young Master 150 more times, creating a comic scene and playing with the circumstances. Jackson decided to ask the guy's name, introducing a new element of curiosity and a hint of the future into their conversation. The guy introduced himself as Jason, completing the introduction of his own identity, and creating a new dynamic in their dialogue. This name, which the old gentleman gave him, introduced an element of mystery and raised questions about the connections between Jason and previous events. Jackson asked Jason if he knew why he was chosen as a son-in-law, adding new notes of intrigue and development to the plot of their relationship. He thought that if Alice chose him, then he could rule out the possibility of murderous intent due to an arranged marriage. But this girl was not blind, she must have fallen in love with his handsome appearance, and wanted to taste his body. Jackson then inquired about Charlotte, adding a new element of curiosity and tension to their conversation. As it turns out, Charlotte was picked up off the street three or four years ago, revealing yet another mystery and adding complexity to their story. As it turned out, there were no craftsmen in the city at all, emphasizing the unusual and difficult conditions in which the characters had to operate. Jackson was very surprised that there was not a single master in the city, expressing his amazement and creating a riddle that would need to be solved later. Then, for some unknown reason, the main character became interested in whether there was a miracle doctor in the city, known throughout the world, introducing a mysterious element of research into the course of the plot. Jason revealed that there was a divine physician in the city, the most skilled doctor in the entire city, adding an element of supernaturalism and intrigue to the medical aspect of their story. Jackson then stood up abruptly and told the guy to lead him to this divine doctor, creating a new twist in the plot and taking the action into unknown places. Jason reported that the doctor charges 100 silver for the registration fee, which introduced an element of financial interaction and possible difficulties for Jackson. The news brought Jackson to a screeching halt, causing him an unexpected moment of confusion and perhaps raising questions about the availability and cost of health care in their world. Jackson could not understand why there were so many people in this square feeling some anxiety, and creating a mysterious atmosphere around what was happening. As it turned out, 
Most of these people were here only because the daughter of this legendary doctor often saw people for free, adding an element of kindness and compassion to the plot. It seemed to Jackson that Jason had seen very few beautiful women in his entire life, and he might have found the female gorilla extremely beautiful, creating a comic moment and emphasizing his inexperience in matters of attractiveness. Apparently, a girl in stockings began to approach people in the square attracting the attention of others and creating an unexpected element of sexuality in the atmosphere. Jackson couldn't understand why everyone was so noisy when the girl came out, feeling some misunderstanding and creating a mystery around the girl's possible impact on others. He was somewhat shocked when he saw a certain person in front of him, creating an intriguing moment and possible tense relationships in the future. Oscar, a doctor, came out to the people, bringing anticipation and resolution of issues related to medical care in their city into the plot. A stranger approached the man, adding a new element of mystery and possible plot twists. Oscar didn't remember this man, so it was pointless. The doctor only treats rich and pretty girls, introducing additional complications and causing disappointment to Jackson. The mysterious stranger, stirring up the evening atmosphere, said that, despite the absence of a personal visit to the doctor, he met with a girl who received him in her mysterious reality several times. Oscar, realizing why his responsibilities had recently diminished, suddenly realized that the girl, accepting everyone for free, had become the secret source of his unprecedented freedoms. Un Jackson, struck by the surprise, noticed that the doctor, in a candid moment, referred to his daughter as a poor damsel, leaving in the air a mysterious and touching sense of her fate. Among those gathered, it was noticed that one of those present was immodestly holding an erotic magazine in his hand, adding a mysterious touch to the atmosphere and causing whispers from surprised guests. Handing the magazine to the doctor, he explained that it was the latest issue of heaven and earth that he had just received, introducing a mysterious element to the exchange of information between them. Oscar assured that the man might well appear, adding that he himself would come later, shrouding the upcoming meeting in mystery and unknown expectations. Jackson entered with determination, only regretting that he did not know the art of drawing, because the inner flame demanded expression through a skill that he did not have. Oscar justified his action by arguing that a man who seemed completely healthy could get advice by offering 100 silver, thereby opening the door to a world of mysterious trades and unpredictable agreements. Jackson was filled with nerves from this doctor, and his patience was running out, leaving an unprecedented tense moment in the air like a light veil of mystery. Having revealed the secret, it became known that several years ago, desperate attempts to use force on Jackson were brutally suppressed by the doctor, leaving a trail of dilapidated victims. Jackson could not grasp the reason for the guy's tediousness and wondered, is it really that it is so impossible to complete the doctor's task, which leads to such indifferent behavior? Jason explained that Jackson was only partially aware not having learned all the details that contributed to his assessment of the guy as boring. Jackson noted that if Jason returned, he would remain for a while, leaving a mysterious anticipation in the air about possible events and plot developments. Finally, Jackson made the decision to engage in conversation with the doctor, determined to unravel the mysteries that shrouded their meeting and opening a new chapter of unknown events. Jackson finally dared to ask what would happen if he completed the task but the doctor was powerless to cure him, introducing a note of foreboding and uncertainty into the conversation. The doctor noted that if a guy is silent about his impotence, then it is considered an incurable disease, which introduced a shade of dark mystery and seriousness into the conversation. Jackson, having decided that he would carry out the task, expressed his readiness and asked where the jackals could be found injecting an aura of adventure and determination into the conversation. Jackson recognized that the man had a sharp tongue but a soft heart and agreed that he truly deserved the title doctor, leaving a hint of respect and recognition in the air. Jackson, surprised to discover that these ears were actually real and not just accessories, suddenly realized that he was in a world where beast men existed, tearing the veil of reality. In his opinion, it was simply heaven on earth, where the amazing and the unimaginable merged, creating a unique, wonderful place. Jackson was approached by someone from the crowd, who introduced another unpredictable thread into the plot, which became the beginning of a new turn in his adventures. A stranger approached the guy and suddenly called himself Ben, claiming that they drank and played dice together, introducing a new element into the plot of old friendships. 
Jackson announced that he was heading to the Valley of the Jackals, setting the stage for an exciting new phase in his adventures, full of mystery and danger. As it turns out, Ben is also heading to the Valley of the Jackals, intertwining the fates of the characters and promising interesting twists in the plot of their journey together. During their journey, Jackson carefully watched his new friend, feeling that mysterious secrets were lurking around him that were just beginning to be revealed. He wondered if, through Ben, he could find out who was behind the assassination attempt on the body's previous owner, revealing a new layer of intrigue in their joint search for answers. As it turned out, Ben was only at the third stage of cultivation, opening up to Jackson a world of secrets and possibilities that had yet to be explored. Ben suggested that they stick together, promising to be Jackson's protector at any moment, as if opening up a reliable allied partnership for him in this mysterious world. Ben claimed that he could easily defeat Jackson, creating a competitive dynamic and causing internal tension in their relationship. Ben said that brothers as strong as him can be counted on the fingers of one hand, giving their strength exclusivity and value in this mysterious world. Believing that Jackson knew nothing at all about cultivation, Ben saw no point in explaining, creating a moment of mystery, and leaving him in the shadow of ignorance. Ben could not understand why Jackson was in such a hurry, leaving in the air the question of the ulterior motives and goals of his rapid movement. Jackson had already directly asked Ben if he had come here to capture him, introducing a note of tension and mistrust into the conversation. Ben, hearing the question, brushed it aside, saying not to talk nonsense, introducing a tone of mocking denial into the conversation and emphasizing his confidence. Ben explained that there was a small misunderstanding between their master and Jackson, raising the question of how their destinies were intertwined in this mysterious world. As it turned out, the master took Ben's wife and threatened her, revealing the prerequisites for entering into the conflict and adding complexity to their plot. Jackson was shocked by this information, suddenly realizing that in this mysterious world there were dark intrigues and dangers that could even affect his personal life. Ben assured Jackson that he did not have to say or offer anything in return, since he was always ready to help him free of charge, establishing a friendly alliance in this strange world. Jackson could not understand why he had to suffer because of their brotherhood, raising questions about the injustice and complexity of their relationship. Jackson, not knowing what he was doing, realized that perhaps he should have revealed his cultivation level, creating misunderstandings and raising questions about his own strength in this mysterious world. Ben finally made a decision and, despite misunderstandings and difficulties, killed the guy, ending this mysterious episode of his adventures in the world of secrets and cultivation. Ben assured Jackson not to be afraid, since the guy he killed had betrayed their gang, injecting a tone of loyalty and trust into their fateful brotherhood. Jackson explained that he needed to go to the Valley of the Jackals because it was a mission from the Divine Physician, revealing a new facet of the mysterious and mystical mission that he had to complete. After these words, Ben underwent an internal transformation as if going wild, creating a tense moment in their relationship and raising questions about the future of their journey together. And Jackson, in response to the change in Ben's behavior, began to make incomprehensible movements, creating a mysterious atmosphere and filling the air with the expectation of the unknown. There was no response to these incomprehensible movements, and Jackson simply fell to the floor, revealing a new wave of mysteries and questions in their unusual brotherhood. Ben noted that it's no surprise that everyone he meets calls him a loser, adding a mysterious edge to his personal story. Ben then kicked Jackson, creating a moment of tension and raising questions about what secrets lie hidden in their relationship. Jackson now realized that he was in an unpleasant situation when the dynamics of their meeting took an unexpected turn, full of tension and unknown dangers. Ben told Jackson that he had only himself to blame for insulting someone he shouldn't have, introducing a note of guilt and complexity into the conversation. Jackson could not understand who he had annoyed so much that he had caused such rage on the part of the previous owner of the body, leaving the question unanswered in this mystical labyrinth. The fact that Ben was secretive and rude greatly stressed Jackson, creating additional difficulties in their relationship and emphasizing the unpredictability of the situation. Ben offered Jackson a deal. If he answered his questions, he promised that his death would be quick and painless, introducing elements of mystery and tension into the situation. Ben was curious about how his body would work as the first lady of the clan, adding an element of intrigue and mystery to the plot. Ben then began to say various obscene things about the guy's wife, 
creating an unpleasant moment and adding spice and hostility to the situation. Jackson wasted no time in taking advantage of Ben's moment of reasoning, grabbing his sword and rushing to attack, introducing sudden action into the plot and changing the course of their confrontation. Ben, finding himself in Jackson's attack, still could not understand how he cultivated, introducing an element of bewilderment and surprise into the plot. Then, as Ben's body lay lifeless, Jackson dragged him toward the cliff, creating a mysterious scene and leaving questions in the air about the fate of this strange brotherhood. And oddly enough, Jackson was preparing to throw Ben's body into the abyss, adding a sudden twist to the plot and an unexpected segue into the next chapter of their adventures. In the end, it turned out that the main character was never able to complete his revenge, leaving Ben alive, like an invisible shadow in his past. With a grin on his face, Jackson asked if he had woken up, as if waiting to meet the moment when the secret would be revealed to him. Ben flared up with anger, not catching how the guy dared to attack him, his mind in a storm of bewilderment, like an endless ocean, trying to understand this unexpected outburst of aggression. Jackson suggested that he remain still, as if anticipating the dark vortex, but it was best to admit that his intentions extended to the desire to take life. After mentioning that sect master Ben dictated all the instructions, Jackson instantly plunged into studying every detail of this figure, as if revealing the mysterious pages of fate. Ben, claiming that the sect master's name was Jacob, swore that he did not know him, only said that Jacob, hiding his identity under a black cloak, remained a mystery, and it was impossible to determine whether he was a guy or a girl. Jackson wondered why so many people sought to take his life as if he had become a living target in strange games where everyone was watching him with their own dark intention. Ben, it is unclear what he hoped for, decided to carry out his revenge to the end and suddenly tried to take Jackson's life, creating a moment that he did not expect. Deftly grabbing a stone that lay not far from him, Jackson threw it in Ben's direction, like a meteor trying to throw ominous intent out of its trajectory. Ben was not destined for luck, and he fell miserably in the face of the jackals as if becoming prey in an endless wasteland, where the through howl of insatiable predators sounded. Jackson calmly asked not to worry, assuring that he would definitely find out who was trying to take his life, and those who sent them would pay the bill. At this time, the warning system steadily informed Jackson that his body had received many threats that required immediate cleansing and vigilance. In 4,000 spins, Jackson received only five pills— and the remaining 3,020 rage points would have forced him to save money if he knew in advance how things would turn out. Jackson wondered if these pills had any other uses, such as increasing strength, luck, or something similar, trying to unlock the full potential of the resources obtained. The protagonist was wondering whether to eat all five pills in one go and see if the effects would double, creating an unexpected surge of power and impact. Jackson couldn't imagine the waterfall that would flow from him, he urgently needed to visit the toilet, like drained water waiting to be released. The best place for this he chose a lake nearby, where the water seemed an ideal refuge for his immediate needs. Here, for some unknown reason, Jackson seemed to feel ill, as if the shadow of a mysterious pain enveloped him, without warning of its onset. And at that moment he realized that the miniature girl was the initiator of what was happening, like a cunning guide leading him to an unexpected set of circumstances. Instantly losing consciousness, he went limp in the water, like a weightless leaf falling into a bottomless lake, swallowed up in darkness. At this time, the girl was just swimming in the lake, unaware of Jackson's unexpected arrival, as if in a dance of water elements, intertwining in a fateful whirlpool. Hearing strange sounds, she instantly asked if anyone else was nearby while Jackson lost consciousness and sank into the water of the lake. A moment later, Jackson emerged from the water, holding his head and exhaustively repeating that he was in great pain, as if waves of pain were reflected in his every movement. But Jackson only admired the girl and said that she was very cute. Swimming out of the water, Jackson, holding his head and groaning in pain, hastily explained to the girl that he had been caught while fleeing from jackals, hit a stone after falling into the river, and apologized, not wanting to scare, never expecting to meet a bathing girl in this secluded place. Saying that she was ready to help if any help was needed, the girl said that she had recently collected some herbs, as if offering her help in treatment. Asking him to turn away so she could change, Jackson instantly complied, as if respecting her privacy and handling the situation with due tact. 
However, unable to contain his attraction, he decided to get closer, an inner fire urging him to violate this moment of decency. Abruptly noticing that his nose was bleeding, he decided that it might be best to abstain from taking all five pills at once, the unintended consequences becoming noticeable. For some unknown reason, the girl suddenly jumped out from behind the bushes and said that they needed to quickly run away, as if the shadow of a warning was reflected in their peaceful solitude. Of course, Jackson could not understand what led to the girl's decision. The mysterious secret was revealed in unexpected circumstances. As it turned out, a red-eyed rhinoceros with the fourth rank appeared right in front of them, not sparkling with charm and possessing an explosive character, with an unpleasant habit of attacking any living beings that came into his field of vision. The girl warned the guy that this rhinoceros was pursuing them, an ominous threat not too far away from their heels. During this conversation, Jackson couldn't help but get distracted, fixing his gaze on the girl's breasts admitting that the uncontrollable attraction was preventing him from fully concentrating on a serious conversation. Retreating from the massive stone, they did not count on the fact that this would be able to prevent the attack of the beast, realizing that the situation required more decisive action. Unfortunately, the rhinoceros did not even feel the impact of the stone, simply moving it out of the way, as if the mighty force of its movement did not give in to anything. It is unclear for what reason, the rhino suddenly calmed down and stopped, as if a sudden stop forced him to stop the chase. The girl turned out to be a real cunning one. She put some medicinal powder on a stone, threw it at the rhinoceros, who broke the stone, and the medicinal powder naturally fell on him, relaxing the animal. The girl explained that her father gave her this powder in order to protect her from possible perverts, creating a kind of security barrier. Returning to her story, the girl, identified as Oscar, voiced a short story about how her father gave her medicinal powder as protection against potential threats. The guy suddenly realized that in front of him was the doctor's daughter, as if solving the riddle of her mysterious knowledge and medicinal skill. The girl was tired of Jackson constantly looking at her breasts, and resolutely asked him to turn away. Just scratching the back of his head, Jackson told her to cover herself with something, trying to avoid embarrassment and maintain decency in their unusual situation. The girl did not let up in her requests, begging him not to peek, trying to maintain her intimacy in this unusual circumstance. After a few seconds she announced that he could turn around, as if to confirm that her requests had been heard and to ensure that he could regain his comfort in communication. She expressed surprise that Jackson, who did not know martial arts, decided to go after the jackals, trying to unravel the reason for his unusual choice in this confrontation. Having learned that he was following high level, Restless jackals, the girl was surprised, realizing that these animals were capable of tearing him to pieces, as if meeting them portended danger. The main character knew that he would not go directly against them, but he was considering options on how to deceive them. He suddenly thought that he could use the environment to his advantage to deceive the jackals. The guy asked the girl if she had a scarf, and, if she had one, asked to borrow it. Apparently this was part of Jackson's plan, as he actively teased the rhino getting its attention and creating a dynamic interaction scenario. Naturally, this enraged the rhinoceros, and he immediately rushed in pursuit of the guy, aiming to tear him apart. At this time, Jackson was running at full speed, trying to carry out his intended plan and avoid the furious rhinoceros, on his backing hooves, in pursuit of him. However, the plan turned out to be dangerous, because right before the cliff, Jackson, in a desperate attempt to survive, grabbed a vine, avoiding the furious jackals. A few seconds later he found himself directly opposite a large pack of jackals, ready to pounce on their prey. The leader of the jackals announced that they had an unexpected guest who wanted to go to another world, and asked his subordinates to help him in this endeavor. It is unclear for what reason, but the leader gave the order to tear the rhino's bottom to pieces, emphasizing the aggressive mood of the pack. At this moment, Jackson realized that nature was truly merciless reflecting the brutal reality of facing cruelty and the struggle for survival. Of course, the girl could not understand why she had to resort to such cruel measures, interacting with the immense power and mercilessness of nature. Surprisingly, the rhinoceros at that moment was experiencing indescribable torment, faced with mercilessness and aggression that violated his usual order. The Sokolovs showed no signs of slowing down, continuing their dirty and brutal work despite the suffering they inflicted on others. 
It is unclear where it came from, but a poisonous dagger suddenly appeared, threatening to add even more danger to the already tense situation. Naturally, the leader, struck by the poison, died immediately, leaving the pack without leadership and creating chaos in their endeavor. And his followers, by and large, also failed to survive, succumbing to the poison and finding themselves without protection. The girl immediately asked how the guy was able to carry out such a cunning plan and lead to such unexpected consequences for a pack of jackals. He explained that he managed to do this easily and just needed a little poison and a sharp dagger. He was only sorry that he had stained her handkerchief, but as soon as he returned home, he would immediately give her a new one, wanting to correct his small offense. The girl immediately began to admire the guy, because he showed incredible strength, having dealt with a whole flock of jackals alone. Delighted by her story, Jackson agreed to sell the jackal bezoars for his father's medicine, despite his adventures with the rhinoceros and jackals. The main character, to be honest, found himself in a slight misunderstanding at this moment, faced with an unexpected request from a girl to buy bezoars. The girl again turned to him asking for help. After a few minutes, Jackson finally decided to sell her the necessary bezoars. The main character explained his action by saying that everyone should help each other, emphasizing his own generosity and belief in the importance of mutual assistance. Jackson hoped that the doctor would not be angry, because the registration cost 100 silver, and he sold it to her for 150, expressing his hope that the deal would be understood. When the guy was about to leave, the girl abruptly stopped him, creating a moment of mystery and interest. The girl thanked Jackson for his help and invited him to join her, assuring that her father would definitely be able to help him solve the problem. Jackson asked Grace if she had heard anything about it. Thanks to his increase in rank, he can now clearly hear all the sounds around him, which is a magnificent achievement. Hearing footsteps, he ordered them to hide, inquiring about possible danger. At this time, a certain stranger attacked the very carriage from which the main character heard the noise, creating a tense situation. The man asked if they thought they could escape, emphasizing the inevitability of the situation. His sincere wish was that no one else from Black Wind Village would be left alive, expressing his determination and vengeful intent. Within minutes, the carriage guards were gone, and their opponent continued to demonstrate his ruthless efficiency. He stated that the former first beauty had to live a little longer, since he needed to give his brother the opportunity to have a good time with her, instilling an ominous threat. One of the guards warned them not to dare touch Mistress Jane, otherwise their village would never forget this man, hinting at possible consequences. Grace began to explain that these were unusual bandits, the leader of which was Alexander, already a fourth-rank cultivator and his minions were not much weaker than him, emphasizing the seriousness of the situation. However, Alexander noticed Grace and abruptly grabbed her hand, expressing his power and control in this situation. Of course, all the men immediately had dirty thoughts about what they could do with her, emphasizing the indecentness of their intentions. In hope, Alexander immediately began to harass the girl, demonstrating his aggressiveness and shamelessness. Jackson immediately grabbed the paralyzing vial, taking decisive action in response to the threat, creating hope for a change in the situation. Throwing the vial at the man, Jackson immediately used his sword, trying to protect himself and turn the tide. As one would expect from a bottle with a paralyzing effect, everyone around was indeed motionless, living up to its name. Alexander immediately flared up with rage and began to threaten that he would make mincemeat out of the guy, expressing his anger and aggression. Jackson was not afraid at all, but, on the contrary, began to mock Alexander even more, demonstrating his confidence and mockery. Jackson began to taunt the man, telling him to stand up and not even resist, emphasizing his superiority and dominance in the situation. Alexander's rage points instantly jumped up after such ridicule, expressing his flaring rage and indignation. Since Jackson used a whole bottle of paralyzing effects, they were obliged to replenish his spent rage points creating a kind of balance in the situation. The guard expressed gratitude to Jackson for his assistance, recognizing his contribution to changing the course of events. Jackson simply replied that you can't put a thank you in your pocket, demonstrating his unwillingness to formalize and preference for practical gratitude. The guy apologized to Jackson and admitted that he simply did not know what to expect from their hero, expressing his confusion and uncertainty. Jackson asked if he could ask something from an ordinary guard, who, according to him, solves absolutely nothing, 
expressing his irony and skepticism, deciding that it was better for him to turn to Jane, the one who could actually solve something, he headed in her direction, taking a more reasonable path. The guard immediately realized that this could not be allowed and began to stop the guy, showing determination to prevent a violation of order. But it was too late, because Jackson had already entered the girl, ignoring the guard's attempts to stop him. Jane began by telling the protagonist that she never thought she would meet such a hypocrite, and then asked if 10,000 silver would be enough for him to save her, expressing her displeasure and the terms of the deal. To the surprise, the main character refused the money and, on the contrary, invited her to join him, take a walk through the forest, enjoy some tea, talk and spend time together. Jane could not understand why he would walk through the forest, and asked if he had any feelings for her, expressing her bewilderment and desire to clarify the situation. Jackson explained that he was just looking for an excuse to get her away from the carriage, but admitted that he had a hard time looking at her indifferently, expressing his sincerity and vulnerability. He warned her to be aware that there might be a spy among her guards, emphasizing the need for caution and suspicion in the world around her. But after all, the bandits who attacked her on the road knew that it was she who was coming, and moreover, they chose the time and place so that no one else would be in the area, emphasizing the careful planning of the attack. She then reached into her chest to pull out something, drawing interest and questions from Jackson. Taking out an emerald pendant, an heirloom of her family, Jane offered to present it in the city for compensation and asked what to do with the guards, revealing new aspects of the current situation. Jackson responded that this was not included in the promised 20,000, expressing his reservations about additional conditions. He advised her to state that she was going to interrogate one of the bandits, thereby provoking them to call one of their own to eliminate the alleged traitor. Jackson simply asked her not to mention that it was his idea, emphasizing that real heroes prefer not to make their achievements public until they receive a reward. Jane noticed that this young master was not as simple as he seemed, and she considered him smart, cunning and quite attractive. Jackson explained to Grace that they had agreed to meet Jane in the city that evening, emphasizing that here, in this area, there was no point in talking about high philosophy, since the landscapes were not conducive to this. At this time, when they had already reached the city, people immediately ran to Jane, creating fuss and excitement around her. Gray told Jackson to find her father, and she promised to join later, leaving him with this task. The main character noticed that the girl was very kind, like Buddha, and her beauty and character swept him off his feet, creating an impression and excitement. The girl worked all night, but still did not refuse patience. She was a real angel in the opinion of the guy, who admired her devotion and compassion. In the end, the main character ended up with the doctor, completing his journey to this place. Jackson said that they were both doctors, but they had radically different approaches. He paid him 100 silver and asked him to be more serious. Oscar noticed that the money was very similar to the one he gave the girl, but she claimed that she spent it on materials, creating mystery around the origin of the funds. However, he decided that he wouldn't dwell too much on it, choosing not to pay much attention to the suspicious coincidences. Jackson only asked the doctor not to say that he would reach the rank of master, emphasizing his secrecy and preference for remaining in the shadows. Oscar couldn't understand why the guy came to him if he already had an idea of what he needed, creating mystery around the purpose of the visit. Oscar confirmed that there was a faster method, but it was not simple, and invited the guy to follow him preferring to discuss the details in a more private place. Jackson realized that there was no need to rush to conclusions about the doctor. A bad man could not have such a good daughter as Grace. When Oscar opened the closet, the main character saw strange aprons in front of him, causing him curiosity and questions. They all belonged to different people, creating a mysterious atmosphere and arousing the interest of the main character. Jackson said that the sight of naked breasts made him hard and could not understand how rags could make him aroused, expressing his bewilderment in a sarcastic tone. Oscar set his own condition. If the guy brought an apron to any of the beauties whose names were on his wall, he would help him, creating a mysterious twist in their conversation. Oscar said he knew Jackson was unemployed and asked him to simply say thank you for stepping up to help him, expressing his support and desire for recognition. Jackson immediately flared up in anger after such an incident, expressing his rage and dissatisfaction with what had happened. Jason immediately ran up to Jackson and asked where he had gone since he had barely found him, 
expressing concern and surprise at his disappearance. Jason reminded that from this day on, the main character will study at the academy. He must not be late. He must put on his uniform and run after Jason, emphasizing the importance and rigor of academic discipline. It was only when Jackson came to the academy that he realized that the Chu family had their own educational institution, causing him to be surprised and hesitant. Jason began to explain that Bright Moon Academy was under the Ministry of Ceremony, the main department in the kingdom, and its purpose was to train outstanding servants of the royal court, providing important information about the purpose and intentions of the school. Despite Jason's explanations, Jackson voluntarily decided that he would not study at any academy, expressing his decision and persistence in choosing his own path. Jackson, after spending 200 spins, received a total of 16 fruits, which when consumed increased the level of cultivation, facing challenges and uncertainty in his quest for improvement. Jackson decided to call them cultivation pills and see how they would affect his development, introducing his own experiment into the world of magic and cultivation. Jackson moved into the Phoenix Nirvana sphere, plunging into a world of transcendental peace and harmony with his surroundings. To be honest, the main character didn't really feel the difference. Although, of course, when beating a jackal, it fills up faster. But even without this it was good, emphasizing his attitude to the process and cultivation. Suddenly the main character heard music and couldn't figure out where it was coming from, creating excitement and mystery in the air. He noticed that the melody was very pleasant and extremely soothing. He hasn't had time to just rest and relax for a long time, emphasizing the value of a moment of peace. Thinking about it like this, in his past life, his mother should have received notification of her son's death around this time. He wondered if the people he quarreled with on the internet remembered him, creating nostalgia and reflections on his former life. When he finally reached the source of the sound, he saw a girl sitting in front of him, opening up new horizons and mysterious encounters for him. She immediately asked him if he was peeping, adding a fun element of surprise and additional mystery to their encounter. In response, he asked how it was possible not to look at such a beautiful girl adding a playful touch of compliment to their dialogue. It is unclear for what reasons, but Jackson suddenly began to cry, revealing the mysterious sources of his emotional state. He stood literally in a stupor in front of the girl, as if he had found himself in a moment that turned his inner world upside down. He explained his tears by saying that her melody reminded him of home, creating an impression of longing and nostalgia in his soul. She had not expected him to be a music connoisseur, causing surprise and joy at the unexpected commonality in their tastes and interests. Jackson offered to drink since they were, in his opinion, kindred spirits, inviting a sense of closeness and shared experiences. But the girl asked if he was sure, because this wine is called Fiery Sky, and it is very strong, adding an element of caution and care to their interaction. She said he could act as he pleased, but she warned, putting a cryptic emphasis on her warning. Jackson then decided to ask the girl's name, adding an element of polite curiosity and eagerness to get to know each other. At this time, a man came up and began to talk about Master Jackson singing in a public place and picking up ladies, who introduced into their conversation an unforeseen element of publicity and evaluation from others. The man was surprised, because the guy had previously told him that he was going to Bright Moon Academy, creating a mystery and an interesting development. He approached Jackson and asked when he would repay the money, introducing an element of financial stress and anticipation of the loan's repayment into their meeting. Then he patted him on the back and told him he had a couple of days left, creating an atmosphere of tension and anticipation of the countdown. Unexpectedly, perhaps even for Jackson himself, he abruptly spat out all the wine directly at the man, creating a situation of surprise and possible confrontation. The main character could not understand when he managed to get into debt, or he thought that this was just an excuse to kill him, giving the events an atmosphere of misunderstanding and tension. The main character became furious and asked if the girl was taking him for a fool, because the bottle contained pure alcohol, which introduced an element of deception and disappointment into the conversation. The man was also angry and told Jackson to return his money immediately, threatening to turn his knees inside out creating an atmosphere of tension and threat. But the man was abruptly stopped by the fact that the guy was holding in his hand a flask with a familiar familiar company sign, creating an element of surprise and a possible resolution of the conflict. 
Lady Deborah surprised by her presence in the company of the scum Jackson, raising questions about her choice of company. And at that moment, Jackson felt that the man was afraid of Lady Deborah, realizing that now his position had become even more vulnerable. Tension soared and Jackson immediately became aggressive towards the man. Succumbing to excitement, Jackson came up with a story that the girl was his sister, actively provoking the man with his behavior. After confessing, the stranger warned that Jackson had only three days left to pay off his debts. Jackson explained that the story about his sister was just a joke, but at the same time he invited the girl to be his little sister if she wanted to. The main character, Jackson, realized that he had to pay Lady Deborah 10,000 silver coins for a debt, and this caused him a shock. The main character realized that the previous owner of this body again intrigued him. Deborah warned that in their world, a promise carries weight, and breaking a vow will entail heavenly punishment. Deborah offered him an option. He could take a test in an underground labyrinth where precious resources were rumored to be located, and sell them to cover the debt. From his youth, he admired lions, the kings of nature, whose manes waved in the savannah wind, their mighty roars breaking the silence, recalling the power and wild beauty of living nature. Their main goal in life is to share their own genes, to strive for eternity through the transmission of heredity, like a stream of life rushing through generations, maintaining a connection with the past and the future. With and he, like an alpha male, decided to steal the rich woman's money, weaving tricks and intrigue into his plans, like a cunning predator skillfully maneuvering in his ruthless world. He did this because in his soul he considered himself a lion, striving for strength and steadfastness, as if the hot blood of the king of the savannah flowed into his veins. She gave him three hundred rubles like it was small change, and he is sure that somewhere there is a stash, hidden in the shadows of intrigue and mysterious circumstances, ready to reveal itself to him. Jackson had not expected the girl to return earlier, and her sudden appearance in his life created excitement, like an unexpected twist in the plot, giving it an unexpected and mysterious tone. As it turned out, the girl was also looking for something, just like the guy, and their destinies were intertwined in an unknown web of events, like invisible threads of a pattern in which each element had its own special meaning. Jackson noticed that this is not Alice, and it seems that he is not alone in looking for her wealth, finding himself in a tangled web of intrigue where every step can be decisive in this dangerous game. After a moment, he finally realized that this was her friend, and doubts about her devotion flashed through his thoughts. Suddenly the girl caught a sound, suspicion sparkled in her eyes, and she resolutely began to attack. The next moment, Jackson was thrown back, and in a split second he flew several meters, as if a leaf had been blown aside by the wind. Feeling the power of the blow, Jackson realized that a few more such force impacts, and he would meet with the other world again. The protagonist turned to the system with a request to activate the pleasure ball of a rich woman. The girl laughed at him. Since the second rank tried to prevent her attack, she decided to figure out who was hiding behind this mask. Then, approaching him, she decisively took off his mask, revealing his true face. Seeing his face, she instantly recognized his identity, revealing a secret that had long been hidden in their meetings and encounters. However, Jackson did not show any nervousness at this moment. On the contrary, he shouted the word surprise with enthusiasm, creating a mysterious atmosphere. Instantly grabbing her arm, he stated that the best way to counter ranged opponents was to engage in melee combat. Immediately he began to ring her, not allowing her to move, trying to control the situation in his favor. The guy's luck was added to by the awareness of his opponent. He was clearly delighted, having managed to grab her breast during the struggle. The girl, unable to bear it, confessed and asked to let him go. But Jackson was not going to listen, and surprisingly did not let her go. In some incomprehensible way, a huge hole formed around them, mysteriously calling on unknown forces. Jackson realized he was lucky with the pleasure ball. Without it, he would have already turned out to be a scattered pile of ashes. The hole affected him so strongly. In addition, he successfully increased his rank, adding another merit to his victory over the hole. She radiated clear signs of her last strength, and a bright flame faded in her eyes, extinguished under the influence of a merciless struggle and fatigue. Suddenly, the main character noticed that the girl had passed out, and a lack of consciousness flashed in her eyes. The girl was already begging to let him go, because she could not withstand further tension. Promising to let her go, 
he set a condition that she must answer his question before he frees her. Jackson suggested that they divide the spoils equally, and, smiling intriguingly, asked what she was really looking for in this fight. She admitted that she was looking for the accounting book, and at that moment she could not understand how the second rank survived her attack so easily. Promising to let her go afterwards, Jackson offered to divide the loot equally after learning that she was looking for the ledger. But given his position in the family, he realized that he did not know exactly where it was. Flushing with rage, Jackson couldn't fathom how they could work as a team if they didn't trust him. Maybe not now, but in the near future, he will take a prominent place in the family, and then she will return with an offer of cooperation. Deciding that if she was so aware of his position in the family, she probably knew that he wanted Alice, Jackson asked her for help. The friend flared with rage since he, it turns out, actually assumed that she would agree to break the trust of her best friend for his sake. Ultimately, she nevertheless decided to help the guy, emphasizing that when he took at least some position in the family, he would thank her with support. Jackson discovered a strange thing. At first he thought that he had broken his shoulder, but in fact he discovered some kind of hieroglyph mysteriously looming on his skin. The main character did not have to worry, because this symbol is visible only to him. Having made his way to the third rank, a new function called an airstorm became available to him. Jackson couldn't understand why she couldn't look attractive considering she was just a hologram. Girls, even in the guise of a program, turn out to be somewhat paradoxical creatures. Their actions and decisions do not always correspond to common sense, creating the illusion of human shortcomings even in the world of algorithms and codes. Jackson immediately began to study how this new feature worked, trying to master all its intricacies and capabilities. He could not accept the fact that the system could be sensitized or offended by encountering unexpected perceptions from artificial intelligence. After that, he began testing the new function, exploring its capabilities and boundaries, venturing into the world of air storms with unprecedented enthusiasm. Usually in games, the air element hits an area, and he decided to find out what this ability can do, anticipating a new level of virtual capabilities. He finally decided to use his new ability, bringing a whirlwind of change into the game reality, and enjoying the moment when the wind obeyed his virtual will. Lucy was furious that Jackson had dared to skip first class, showing his independence and earning her ire. Lucy's husband, Mason, argued that it was not their decision as it was their daughter's, stressing the importance of respecting personal decisions. She agreed that it was useless to argue with her daughter's character, but expressed a desire only to help, showing concern and confusion in the face of the complexity of motherhood. Just after these words, a guy literally flew into the couple. After a moment, he regained his balance, his gaze transformed from initial shock to persistent determination, and he was ready to answer the questions that arose. The woman instantly flared up, demanding an answer to the question of where he had been all this time. All these events unfolded due to the fact that an airstorm, which turned out to be a movement technique, led to the unexpected appearance of a guy in the scene. For unknown reasons, Jackson changed his facial expression, creating a mystery around what was going on in his thoughts. The pleasure ball stopped functioning and Jackson felt as if it was fading, overwhelmed by uncertainty and anxiety. Mason hurried to Jackson, relying on his paternal instincts, and began to question him about what had happened, taking a deep interest in the young man's well-being. Having begun his explanation, he said that on the way to the academy he was attacked, robbed of all his money, and then thrown into the air with a strong blow, and that's how he ended up in this state. He admired how cleverly he avoided details, thinking it was simply brilliant of him. All of Jackson's belongings had already been moved to his room in preparation for his return after the incident. Mason was surprised at the effectiveness of their clan's medicine, because just an hour ago Jackson was literally on the verge of death, and now he is completely healthy. The woman told him to return to the academy tomorrow, making it clear that it was important to continue his studies and restore the previous rhythm of life. She then called someone over, probably to instruct them to keep an eye on Jackson or to discuss additional precautions. A tall and muscular guy joined them, raising interest and questions regarding his role in further events. The guy's name was Ethan, the son of their butler, who had already reached the third rank at such a young age, causing surprise at his early success. Also, the woman decisively appointed him as a senior, entrusting him with the leadership of Jackson's protection and security at the academy. 
Jackson noticed that Ethan inspired a certain suspicion, but at the same time showed friendliness, creating a strange but intriguing appearance. But suddenly everything changed within an instant, and Jackson couldn't understand why Ethan had become so hostile. He was angry that Jackson didn't die, because if he had, Alice might have been free of her obligations. The main character called Ethan another heel of his wife, emphasizing his role and the feeling of her power over the situation. Enraged, Ethan noticed that his usual patience had been exhausted and the tension in the room had increased, creating an atmosphere of conflict. Ethan decided to wait until the day after tomorrow, after the test, to find out what Jackson would dream about, creating an intriguing atmosphere of anticipation around them. Despite the Academy's ban on hazing, his talent was obvious, and Ethan is confident that one day Jackson will beg him for mercy, recognizing his power and influence. After this, it became clear how insignificant the D-level is, threatening that in order to avoid death, one must refrain from irritating Ethan, he will reveal his helplessness. It suddenly dawned on Jackson that unlocking his cultivation ability might entail unnecessary trouble and difficulty. At the podium, a man announced that the academy was classifying students into heavenly, black, earthly and yellow classes according to their abilities, streams of students flying up to the podium to be tested and their names called. The first guy called was an extremely confident young man who asked everyone to refrain from crying after they saw his amazing talent. Of course, Ethan couldn't believe that this guy had an A-level, because in the Duke's world, only a few people had such a high level of talent. The teenager prepared for the upcoming test, mustering determination and tension, ready to prove his exceptionality in front of the eyes of the evaluators. Silence enveloped everyone present, waiting for what would happen next. All eyes were fixed on the guy, ready to reveal his talent in front of an attentive audience. Ethan came after the guy, declaring that he would show Jackson real talent. Perhaps now he looks at him as the son of a palace family, but after descending from the podium, Ethan will find himself in a place where Jackson cannot even reach by raising his head. This day will forever be etched in the memory of future generations, because today Ethan begins his ascent to the top of the world. When Jackson started talking about Alice, the guy suddenly asked him to shut up, as if the unwanted interruption in the topic had irritated him. Nervousness was clearly visible on the guy's face, pressing on him the most, creating the appearance of tension and anxiety. The man asked to announce that the guy had successfully entered the heavenly class, thereby revealing his outstanding abilities and merits. Naturally, everyone present was amazed by the guy, admiring his skills and achievements. Now it was Jackson's turn, and the entire attentive audience was eagerly awaiting his performance. At this time, everyone present was discussing how unfair it was that he could hug and kiss the goddess every night, causing excitement and discontent in the audience. The man hurried Jackson, begging him to be more prompt, because there were still many students to check. Deciding to help him, the man began to cooperate to ensure that his blood reached this mysterious ball. After hearing about Ethan from the women, she did not show any undue surprise and only asked to teach him more diligently, emphasizing the importance of his training. She could not understand why she was forced to appear, because the rules did not always have to be followed, and she felt strange in this requirement. It is unclear why something unexpected happened, and this mysterious event remained shrouded in mystery. It turned out that when the sphere touched Jackson's blood, it suddenly burst, causing an unexpected effect and shock in the audience. The man could not believe what was happening, because this was only possible with legendary talent, and legendary talents were considered something outstanding, missing for more than a hundred years. The man announced to Jackson that he was successfully passing into the yellow class, and students with steel skills would simply take the test with a new sphere. Who would have thought that the sphere would burst? It's lucky that he came across an incompetent teacher. He would have guessed that something was wrong. The woman asked Jackson to call him into the office, asking cryptic questions that hovered in the air, filling the moment with mysterious anticipation. At that moment, when the main character was heading towards the office, someone suddenly stopped him, creating tension and mystery in the air. Ethan warned Jackson slightly threateningly that any attempt to discredit Alice would not be without consequences telling him to be careful with his words. The guy was a little surprised that the rector chose to meet with Jackson rather than with him, causing him some bewilderment and uncertainty. He was only told to wait until the rector had free time, and then she would call him, leaving the guy waiting and mysterious. 
It is clear that after this the guy flared up with anger, irritation and dissatisfaction. In a fit of anger, the guy promised that in the end the family would become his, expressing determination and desire for change. Jackson was informed that the rector was waiting for him inside and asked to pass, filling the moment with anticipation and mystery. He couldn't understand why she called him alone, and doubts flashed through his mind whether this was something he should be happy about or not. Julia greeted Jackson, establishing a warm atmosphere and starting the conversation with kind words. From this he concluded that the situation seemed to be promising, hoping for positive prospects. For some unknown reason, Julia suddenly slapped Jackson, creating a mysterious turn of events and shock in the audience. She explained her action by the fact that he allegedly looked at her lustfully. The explanation added added piquancy to the situation. The last person who looked at her like that ended up in the hospital almost immediately, hinting that she did not tolerate even a hint of inappropriate behavior. However, Jackson apparently didn't get the hint and continued to violate boundaries further by gazing lustfully at the woman, ignoring the warning and causing resentment. She, being angry, asked if she should rein him in right on the spot, expressing her intense displeasure and irritation. Then he realized that even if he took advantage of the sphere of pleasure with a rich woman, his fate would still hang in the balance. Suddenly there was a drastic turn of events, and the protagonist announced that his sister's outfit gave her away as it was an outfit out of this world. She announced that she discovered it in the dungeon, thinking it was stylish, and decided to take it, creating a sudden twist and mystery around the event. Jackson couldn't figure out which dungeon she was talking about, sensing a vague misunderstanding and confusion surrounding her statement. In this world, few people know about other dimensions, so it is possible that they are unknowingly connected to a parallel world, causing mystery and misunderstanding. With his current strength, any exploration of the dungeon is doomed to failure. In such conditions he will be forced to concentrate not on exploration, but on survival. Jackson inquired about what she was trying to achieve by asking about her goals and intentions. She explained that she simply wanted to confirm her hunch, expressing a desire to make sure that her assumptions or intuitions were correct. When Julia bit his finger, she asked him not to scream so loudly, claiming it was just a small amount of blood. She was not surprised, because she always knew that nothing happens to Vera by chance. She only confirmed that he truly has a legendary talent. Jackson assumed that after she found out about his talent, she might now try to kill him by creating tension and fear in his mind. While the blood of a person with legendary talent can greatly help in the development of others, such as supporting Alice, they may not even be a real couple, adding complexity to their relationship. She talks about him as if he is some kind of burden or nuisance, instilling feelings of inferiority and underappreciation. He decided to remind her that many people knew about his visit to her office, and if anything happened to him, she would be the prime suspect, warning her of the possible consequences. Julia just laughed and affectionately stroked his head, creating a mysterious atmosphere and causing bewilderment in response to his warning. And it was funny, because he assumed that she was planning to kill him. As it turned out, the Duke of Bright Moon asked her to take care of him, and no one suspected that she had been deceived from the very beginning. She asked him not to reveal this information to anyone until he became stronger, urging caution and concern for his future. His test doesn't matter here. He asked if she was only helping him because he was handsome and she liked him raising the question of her true motives. It was not clear to him why she didn't like him, because he considered himself handsome, causing him bewilderment and disappointment in his attractiveness. He was glad that now even the rector had his back, and this meant that he could do almost anything he wanted at this academy, giving him a feeling of power and freedom. Suddenly hearing screams from afar, he thought that even here there were bullies, filling the moment with bewilderment and anxiety. As it turned out, one of the guys advised the other that it would be better if he gave the money earlier, since they were classmates, and he did not want to beat him too much. In the end, they did not deceive and extort, and he paid him. Of course, after what he saw, Jackson was shocked, experiencing unpleasant excitement and bewilderment from what was happening. In the yellow class, where talent is limited to level D, Jackson, at rank 3, could easily stand up to their students' bullies. He came out from behind the bushes and ordered them to immediately release the student, showing authority and determination. Of course, the young man, not judging Jackson by his D-rank, decided not to be intimidated, even when he came to the defense of his comrade, 
showing courage in the face of danger. They laughed when Jackson, expressing his desire to acquire their spirit stones, caused joyful merriment around, as if lighting up the moment with a joke. The young man who was attacked begged Jackson not to provoke them, begged him to leave, as if realizing that his strength was incomparable to the mercilessness of their attack. By uttering the word fat to one of the guys, Jackson accidentally ignited the rage in his soul, causing a surge of anger and indignation. And soon he fell into a rage, turning into an attack, rushing towards his opponents with unstoppable force, like a whirlwind of a raging storm. To the boy's surprise, Jackson easily stopped his attack, demonstrating incredible skills and reactions that went beyond expectations. Repeating the order for them to hand over the spirit stones to him, Jackson said this with unshakable confidence, as if his words carried immutable power. Following his words, Jackson struck with his elbow directly in the chest, mockingly asking if his opponent was deaf in the face of an unpredictable challenge. Of course, the friends of the guy who had just been beaten immediately joined the fight, creating a whirlwind of a confrontation filled with flashes of emotion and adrenaline. But Jackson was not worried at all, maintaining his cool and acting calmly, as if the inner fire of his determination did not allow him to waver in the face of the growing chaos around him. The guy's request sounded pleading, not to take away all the spirit stones, since they were intended for Boss Yi, creating a tense situation full of intrigue and mysteries. The determined protagonist asked the question, wondering who Boss Yi was, as if lifting the veil of secrecy, which brought new mysteries to his adventurous journey. Boss Yi turned out to be an earth-class guy, surpassing the third rank in the hierarchy, which added to the mystery and importance of his role in this world. It may be easy for him to fight back against Jackson, who has won the hearts of many. In his determination lies a power that can change the course of events and destinies. Such statements, naturally, led to the guy again feeling the wrath of Jackson, who does not tolerate the disobedient and is ready to confront any challenge. Overly confident in himself, the protagonist decided to call out his boss, uttering words that could lead to the inevitable retribution overtaking him. Even if he uses them to pay off his debts, the remaining portion should still have considerable value, carrying with it the mystery of stories and views. Now he was faced with a new challenge. He had no idea how to best take advantage of these resources in front of him. For Jackson, a course in military tactics became a real challenge, because it seemed to him that time slowed down, making the lesson extremely boring and monotonous. The guy next to him, on the contrary, felt admiration for the lessons of military tactics, because for the yellow class such classes were a real rarity, enlivening the ordinariness of the educational process. Jackson noticed that the guy was looking at him strangely, clearly trying to start a conversation, as if an unknown secret was flickering in his eyes, ready to be revealed. The guy turned to Jackson with a request to teach him the art of taking spirit stones, seeking to master knowledge that could give him strength and wisdom. The main character agreed to teach the guy, but in exchange he demanded that he share the secret of how to properly use spirit stones. This is a little difficult, you need to hold the stones between your palms and try to cultivate, as if releasing a stream of energy from them to reveal their secret capabilities. The main character will have to find a suitable place where he can safely try to cultivate stones, revealing their potential in harmony with the environment. The guy reminded him that Jackson had never taught him how to overcome his arrogance, caused by a proud disposition that required special attention and understanding. Jackson explained that the first thing is to be attractive enough, then to use your beauty to win Alice's heart, and finally to give the Duke of Bright Moon a reason to become his father-in-law. When Jackson left the academy, he suddenly found himself facing the same bully who seemed to be the embodiment of the challenge that had challenged him back in his studies. His boss showed up next to the bully, creating a tense situation where not only personal ambitions collided, but also power that could turn the whole game upside down. The man noted that he had never heard of such a master, creating intrigue around Jackson's mysterious experience and the possibility of his unique skills. In response, Jackson noted that he had heard of him, adding that, in his opinion, this master was only one class above his own skills. Of course, he flared with rage when he heard that he considered him just one class lower, and tried to hide his disappointment by accepting the challenge with dignity. Since they were both rank three, he had no choice but to accept defeat. Jackson resolutely refused to reveal the full extent of his power, maintaining a secret. 
the main character comes up with a brilliant idea that reveals a new way to resolve the conflict, and possibly, changes the outcome of events in his favor. Jackson claimed to be able to defeat him with just the sentence, creating curiosity and preparing for the moment of truth. The boss confidently stated that Jackson could talk as much as he wanted, but if after that he could even move, he would face a crushing defeat, reaching almost half to death. Then he shouted that someone was trying to kill him, and those who appreciated and loved him immediately came to the rescue, expressing their readiness to protect and support him in difficult times. Then he remembered the girl about their agreement, which became a guarantee of fidelity and mutual support, as if resurrecting the moments when they promised to be there for each other in the most difficult situations. Of course, the man, after making a meaningful statement, laughed in response, appreciating the resourcefulness and unexpected development of events in his favor. But to everyone's surprise, the boss felt a sharp pain, as if a secret power, long hidden in the shadows, began to manifest itself with incredible force. As it turned out, he was attacked with a whip directly from behind, revealing an unforeseen source of pain that instantly interrupted his moment of victory. And then they attacked again, but not from behind, creating chaos and an unexpected turn in the battle that forced everyone to reconsider their plans. Everyone present could not understand what had happened, because it was too unexpected and mysterious, creating an atmosphere of uncertainty and anxiety around themselves. Strangely enough, it turns out that Charlotte was behind the attack, adding a new element of mystery and intrigue to the plot that remained unresolved. And yet Jackson was right, because with one sentence he attracted three beauties, placing pieces on a chessboard of struggle for power and attention. Charlotte simply asked how he was not ashamed to call for help, raising the issue of pride and values that could be jeopardized by his actions. He admitted that, planning to use hidden weapons to attack, they anticipated his intentions and arrived early, disrupting his plans and adding a new dynamic to the conflict. The girl explained that she was forced, and in a normal situation she would never have supported him, revealing the complexities and external influences behind her decision. The teacher rushed over when he heard the noise and asked what was going on, introducing an element of unpredictability and suspense into the plot. Grace announced that this was a disciplined teacher known to dislike students who create disturbances, adding an element of tension and possible consequences. The bully immediately ran to the teacher with a request to restore justice, introducing a new turn of events and raising the issue of punishment and the concept of justice in their world. He began to explain that a freshman in the yellow class, Jackson, was taking aggressive actions against others, causing concern and questioning his behavior. The main character began to explain that there were many witnesses who could confirm that he was not the first to start the aggression, introducing new aspects and evidence into the investigation. Here, abruptly and unexpectedly for everyone, the girl announced that it was she who beat Jackson, introducing a twist in the plot that turned the idea of the causes of the conflict upside down. All the guys around were annoyed that the three beauties were showing interest in Jackson, creating an atmosphere of jealousy and competition in the world of student relationships. The teacher asked the bully whether Deborah had actually attacked Jackson, introducing an element of doubt and emphasizing the importance of accurately understanding what was happening. He began to say that Jackson was the first to provoke the conflict after which the three girls attacked the boss, highlighting a different perspective on the situation and raising questions about the roots of the conflict. The main character began to say that every woman is obliged to protect a handsome man, and of course, they will protect him. If someone doesn't like it, they should contact the rector, emphasizing their position and readiness to defend their beliefs. The teacher somehow decided that the bully was to blame and hit him hard creating a shocking turn of events and raising questions about the fairness of the teacher's actions. Of course, Jackson did not expect such a development of events and was slightly in shock, encountering unexpected violence from a teacher for the first time. But he began to explain that Deborah was one of the few rank 5 experts in their academy, and if she beat someone, then it was undoubtedly not her fault, bringing a new aspect to the situation and raising doubts about the teacher's approach. If the bully had also reached rank 5, his treatment would be favorable, in accordance with the rules of Bright Moon Academy, where strength is considered a virtue. If you break the rules, you must be punished 800 laps around the field, highlighting the strictness and uncompromising nature of discipline at their academy. When the teacher finished, he declared that everyone could return to their activities, creating relief from a tense moment 
and returning balance to their routine. Charlotte reported that the teacher's blows were ten times stronger than her whip, noting that Jackson was truly unlucky to face such punishment. Charlotte couldn't understand why Deborah and Grace were so openly supportive of Jackson, adding mystery to their relationship and raising questions about hidden motives. Jackson announced that they had known Grace for a long time, and Deborah was her sister's friend, which quite naturally explained their willingness to protect him, clarifying the connections and friendships that had developed over time. The girls who came up behind her wondered why she suddenly disappeared from the cultivation lesson, introducing an element of mystery and emphasizing the unusualness of her behavior. They said that if it weren't for Deborah's father, she might have turned out to be even worse than trash, introducing into the conversation a hint of complexity and difficulty in her life. Jackson couldn't help but notice why Charlotte had gone silent so suddenly, creating a mystery and raising questions about what could have happened. He noted that their treatment of the Duke's second daughter was not respectful and asked if they were afraid that her protection spell might be activated, emphasizing the possible consequences and warning. The girls admitted that they had never heard of such a spell, adding an element of mystery and further misunderstanding to the plot. Jackson began to say that Hertza cast the protective spell on the second miss, so anyone who harmed her would receive equal damage. Jackson suggested that the girls test his words by pointing to the rocks so that they would be convinced of the veracity of his statements, adding an element of evidence to what was happening. Everyone present could not understand where the two girls had disappeared, adding mystery and creating a mystery around their disappearance. As it turns out, the two of them somehow ended up on the pillar, and after that they decided that they would never touch Charlotte again in life, creating a surprising and sudden resolution to the conflict. Jackson realized that even the Duke of Bright Moon was unable to understand his abilities, and it was much easier for him to deceive girls than it seemed. The remaining third girl abruptly began to apologize to Charlotte, expressing regret and understanding of her mistake regarding her second daughter of the Duke. At this time, she looked at Jackson and smiled at him, creating a moment of agreement and understanding between them. In the cafeteria, he asked for more meat explaining that he was under terrible stress and needed me to cope with it, introducing an additional element of concern for the character's health. Jackson asked the system to show his rage points so that he could feel at least a little happier, introducing an element of self-discovery and the desire for psychological balance into the story. Jackson, disappointed with the lottery, decided to at least try to use the spirit stone, introducing an element of mysticism and a possible turn of events. The main character began to do exactly as the guy who took up the use of the spirit stone told him, describing the process and adding intrigue to the character's actions. But when he didn't succeed at all, he became furious and couldn't understand why nothing was happening, introducing an element of frustration and tension into the plot. The program began to explain that cultivation methods are different, and cultivating the Nirvana Phoenix Sutra requires being beaten adding an unexpected aspect to the world of magic and training. And just at this moment, Charlotte approached the guy, offered her support or commented on the current situation, adding even more interest to the scene. And then she completely announced that she would treat him and decided to talk and find out everything. Charlotte breathlessly asked Jackson if he could try eating more slowly, as if time had slowed down, waiting for an answer that hung in the air. The girl shook her head with displeasure, seeing how the guy was eating, her expression indicated that his manner of eating caused her slight irritation. The girl, with a somewhat embarrassed smile, admitted that she was a little ashamed to express this, but she sincerely thanked the guy for his help today. In the shadow of the sparkling genius of her sister, Alice, the girl felt the shadow of comparisons that were always made with her, and therefore they laughed at her merrily, as at children's jokes. Speechless before the laughter, she is powerless to respond because deep down she truly feels less gifted compared to her brilliant sister, and words are lost. Jackson, feeling her pain, said that it was probably difficult for her and asked her to relax, reminding her that now they were together and would laugh at him, because he was worse than her. Besides that, everyone has their own strengths, and perhaps her true advantage is not cultivation, which adds variety to their relationship. Charlotte was curious to find out what her own strength was. It was at this point that she began to understand that everyone carries something unique and valuable within them. The guy was noticeably embarrassed, because he had known her only for a short time, and it was inconvenient for him to immediately highlight all her strengths, 
like a puzzle that was just beginning to take shape. Just from the experience it came out that her strength lies in her long legs, an attempt to find inner beauty in a world of excitement and first meetings. Charlotte turned to Jackson with a request to look at something, as if the spark of interest in her eyes opened up new horizons and promises. A surprisingly strange situation arose between them, as if the invisible threads of fate were supporting the fabric, and they found themselves in an unusual but attractive interaction. Jackson was delighted, collecting a lot of rage points, and decided that he should include the girl in his adventures more often, as if she had become an integral part of him. Liam, the same man who extorted money from the guy, asked how his debt was going. The main character admitted that he had no money and asked to take spirit stones as payment, as if offering something more valuable and mysterious in exchange for material things. The man, frankly nervous, understood that the head of the sect was trying to take his life, and not just take the money, as if a dark whirlwind of fate was rising around him. The man reported that he had paid the principal but not the interest, realizing that he would now have to pay with his life for the unpaid interest, like a dark debt with deadly consequences. A few seconds later, thoughts burst into the man's head, like a swarm of questions and doubts flying at him, creating internal noise and disorder. It turned out that it was Charlotte, who, realizing what she had done, asked if this would be enough to pay off the debt in the form of interest, as if she were trying to restore the balance. The man asked Charlotte why she didn't ask why Jackson owed money as if trying to uncover secrets that could change the picture of what was happening. The man handed Jackson some piece of paper, as if trying to reveal a new chapter of this complicated story in the ink handwriting of mysterious events. Having received the piece of paper from the man, Jackson instantly tore it up, as if trying to avoid revealing a secret that could affect his fate. Jackson's action, instantly tearing the paper, aroused the man's wariness, for grinding paper into dust is not an ordinary art. Now he had to report this to the head of the sect. But the main character abruptly stopped him and asked who said that he was allowed to leave, as if creating an atmosphere of mystery and unknown threats around himself. The guy defiantly collapsed to the floor and began screaming, accusing the Plum Blossom sect of attempting to rob the academy, as if trying to draw attention to the intriguing scene. The man, naturally, immediately became alarmed, because all these words seemed to be a lie, in his opinion as if a fog had covered the true incident. Of course, the disciplined teacher immediately came running to them, the embodiment of order and responsibility, ready to restore peace to chaos. Jackson began to complain to the teacher, claiming that the man had stolen the stones from him, as if trying to use the power of authority to restore justice. Liam immediately began to apologize to the teacher, claiming that it was all a misunderstanding, trying to defuse the tension and avoid unpleasant consequences. Charlotte also got into the game, supporting Jackson, creating a united front in defense of her interests and truthfulness. Of course, the man in such a situation immediately became alarmed, because he did not know what to do, as if he was at a dead end in front of an unpredictable situation. And then he finally realized who was behind the attempt to frame him, and with a threat in his voice he promised the guy that his days were numbered. Well, of course, the teacher did not allow him to carry out the threat, and in response he instantly collapsed to the floor, as if under the influence of an invisible force of discipline. Jackson told him to be grateful for this lesson and strongly suggested that it was time to stop robbing others, as if emphasizing the importance of self-discovery and change in one's life. When a man became too aggressive, the teacher was ready to intervene, like a law enforcement officer, ready to prevent possible violence and maintain calm. The teacher, nevertheless, decided to calm the situation and began to act like an experienced mediator, trying to restore balance and lead to calm. Then an explosion sounded around the man, as if a whirlwind of unexpected events swirled around him, leaving mysterious traces and questions in the air. Also, in addition to all of the above, the man had some problems with his legs, as if misfortune had overtaken him from all sides at once, creating a dark cloud of adversity. The teacher stated that he did not care what the Plum Blossom sect was doing outside, but emphasized that bullying his students was absolutely unacceptable, as if asserting his defense in the face of lawlessness. Of course, the main character was happy, because now he didn't even have to strain. The teacher took over the protection, like a savior who came at a difficult moment. The teacher picked up some secret technique and began to use it, as if opening the gate to unknown methods of restoring order and control. 
Then the bags of stones began to rise in their own way, as if embodying a mysterious power and influence that no one had previously known about. He asked the main character if the man had stolen anything except spirit stones and money, as if hoping for an honest answer in a situation full of mysteries. After the man objected, the teacher asked if he needed to use physical force again, as if to emphasize that the decision lay in the hands of the interlocutor. But he explained that the spirit stones were theirs, and the money his own, as if trying to restore balance in the blurred world of relationships and interests. Jackson began to taunt the man, declaring that their family had no use for his measly few silvers, as if swaying the balance of power and influence in his favor. The teacher completely trusted Jackson's words and was ready to take action against the man, as if he had become the guardian of justice in this complicated story. In conclusion, he emphasized that the Plum Blossom sect would never let Jackson go, as if challenging the future shadows that could lie in wait for him ahead. On a wave of emotion, the main character announced that this time he was hosting and invited Charlotte to join him, as if creating a new twist in the plot and anticipating unexpected events. Suddenly, a strange man appeared behind the couple and said that in two days Jackson would not have time to eat, hinting at inevitable changes in their future. Charlotte reveals that it is a young craftsman, Noah, who is the main competitor in their family's weapons industry, introducing a new element of rivalry and tension into the plot. The guy argued that the term competitor was used incorrectly, their spiritual factory was out of order, and the family was doomed, highlighting the inevitable changes and the plight of their family. He stated that he would kill for his family in a family competition that both sisters would marry him, adding an element of tension and determination to the family dynamic. Jackson asked if he realized that brash people like him usually end badly, emphasizing the inevitability of retribution for those who take overt action. Of course, the man flared up with rage after such an act. Emotions filled him like a raging fire, ready to collapse on an obstacle. Jackson emphatically stated that no one was superior to him, emphasizing that respect should be earned by him, and not the other way around. Noah, having concluded that there was no need to wait for competition, decided to resolve everything immediately, starting right now to finally settle things with the guy. In parting, Jackson simply noted that they were both still part of the academy. Despite Jackson's warning about belonging to the academy, the man could not restrain his impulse and decisively began to attack the guy without slowing down. When Jackson attempted an attack, the man decided to use a magical barrier, which prevented Jackson from breaking through. But suddenly, when everyone was on guard, Alice suddenly appeared behind the man. Her appearance added even more mystery and uncertainty to the situation, causing everyone to freeze. A moment later, she instantly struck him demonstrating her unexpected strength and agility in this tense confrontation. Despite this, Noah was still able to stand on his feet, showing extraordinary endurance and determination in the fight. Of course, Charlotte was glad that her sister was back, and her face shone brightly with a smile of joy and relief. She considered him the fourth guy, but he suddenly rose to fifth place as the unexpected hero in her story. He stated that her talent had always stood out in family rivalries, but now that she had reached level 5, he had taken away her advantage, turning family battles into equal duels. Finally, he only said that today he would save his husband's life. In addition, he decided to emphasize that she should prepare herself because she would end up begging him to marry her. Jackson immediately began to explain that he allegedly tried to kill him, although he himself did nothing of the kind. Having protected Charlotte, he felt somewhat relieved as if a weight had been lifted from his shoulders, and a ray of light settled in his soul. He felt joy because it seemed that his wife no longer held such a deep feeling of hostility towards him. This brought him indescribable comfort. Suddenly it turned out that Alice happened to be nearby and came to return home with them. Naturally, the main character found himself in complete darkness regarding this family competition, not having the slightest idea what games were being played in his absence. Charlotte suggested that Alice be sure to give him a lesson during the family competition. In the end, Jackson decided not to remain in the dark and actively inquired about what the family competition was about, trying to reveal all its secrets and nuances. The Chu and Yuan families have been feuding for many years, but due to the interference of the imperial court, their rivalry cannot take place openly. So, every year, before the dungeon opens, they compete for market share. For Jackson, only one thing became clear. The dungeon was not always accessible, 
which emphasized its uniqueness and made him want to unravel its secrets in limited periods. Alice also emphasized that all representatives of the younger generation are obliged to participate, and the guy is no exception. A total of ten rounds are planned in the competition, and if Jackson participates in them, then his family automatically loses one of the rounds. Alice noticed that the man's weapon was somehow supported during her attack. Perhaps they were able to call for help from outside. The protagonist asked them not to be so gloomy and asked if it would be a problem if he guaranteed victory in his round. He added that her natural beauty deserves brightness and a smile, and therefore gloominess does not match her charm. Alice, hearing these words, suddenly felt a blush flush into her cheeks, as if an invisible thread connected her heart with the feelings that she suddenly began to realize. Charlotte sharply noted that his chatter was unlikely to help him survive, let alone win the round. There is still half a month, and he has enough time to rise from the third rank to the fifth. Alice noticed that Jackson had undergone significant changes, and her feelings for him were no longer so filled with hatred. At that moment, Lolita met the family, beaming with her usual joy, despite the shadows of past strife, and like a ray of sunshine, she illuminated the moment of meeting. Jackson asked if she really missed him so much that she greeted him so happily. Well, of course, Lolita was absolutely not ready to meet him, and expressing her surprise, asked why he suddenly appeared here. He explained this by saying that they were still husband and wife, and she came for him in a carriage. Lolita, her eyes sparkling with anger, was ready to beat him to death. A volcanic rage boiled in her heart, like a storm tearing apart the skies with its furious thunder. And Jackson, frightened by Lolita's Easter egg gaze, immediately began to hide behind his wife, like a little boy seeking refuge under his mother's wing. As he approached Alice, he felt that her body was like ice but her figure was stunning with its beautiful grace, like the art of elegance embodied. Of course, Alice didn't particularly like all this and she glanced at the guy. Lolita, sarcastically whispering insults, began to ask the guy how he managed to survive until today, given that a mortal threat was chasing him. Alice felt a slight tension after the words were spoken. Her gaze cautiously slid over her surroundings, like a sensitive hunter, waiting for hidden danger. Lolita had to quickly come up with an excuse. She expressed the thought as if she meant that it would be better if someone got rid of him so that she would not have to face this pathetic sight. The main character turned to his wife asking for help. A shadow of concern flashed in his eyes, as if she were the last hope in a world plunged into chaos. Jackson began to reveal that the people from the Plum Blossom sect were actually chasing him. The last time he was struck by lightning, the twelfth member of the sect was seeking to take his life. Alice, having met Jackson's dissatisfied words about the Plum Blossom sect, could not understand how he could offend them. Her eyebrows bowed in bewilderment, as if deciphering a riddle. Jackson, realizing that Lolita had too much detailed knowledge about the Plum Blossom sect, felt a slight tension, as if an invisible shadow of suspicion was clouding his trust. Alice reported that the strength of the Plum Blossom sect is by no means small. Even her father cannot attack them without good reason revealing secrets that even family ties cannot be broken. Jackson communicated that if using the power of family was not possible, he had another way and she just had to go with it, opening the door to unknown possibilities. Alice said that if she just stayed nearby, she would agree, as if melting in the wrong light, where every moment was filled with mysteries and possibilities. She also asked not to call her wifey, as she did not like it, as if words could create an invisible wall in their relationship and she preferred to maintain her individuality. Jackson said that there was no problem with this, they would simply call her by name, as if giving her freedom of choice, eliminating unnecessary barriers in their communication. Upon arrival at the casino, Jackson immediately began to call the manager, because he was impatient to play, as if the excitement was beckoning him into the arms of his skillful cards and roulette. Jackson began to explain his choice of location, claiming that this casino was the Plum Blossom sect's largest business and could be said to be their economic mainstay. The protagonist sought to deprive them of this income, as if intending to strike at the financial pillar of the Plum Blossom sect and destroy their fragile stability. All those present immediately began to discuss the new guests, as if a whirlwind of conversation was spinning around them, revealing the mysterious threads of their arrival. Alice began to say that her family despises gamblers, and if he loses everything, then she will not help him, as if warning him against losing not only his money, 
but also her support. Jackson stated that their whole life is a gamble, because there is always a risk, but he is not going to lose. He claimed that she is here so that they pay him all their debts. The manager expressed his concerns, saying that he was afraid that Jackson would leave here with broken legs and arms, as if anticipating the possible consequences of a failed conversation. Jackson expressed surprise that the twelfth member of the sect had not yet died, claiming that he was, as always, just a talker, as if ironically commenting on his incredible survival. Alice realized that the Plum Blossom sect was really willing to kill Jackson. They would not attack someone so useless just like that, as if revealing a sinister plan in their actions. The manager immediately ordered everyone to kill him, promising a reward to whoever completed the task as if challenging and raising the stakes in this dark game. Jackson, without losing his characteristic manner, immediately began to hide behind his wife, as if seeking refuge from an impending threat, and again trusting her with his protection. Of course, Alice did not like this, as if she did not expect her husband to use her as a shield in a dangerous game, and dissatisfaction was reflected in her gaze. He unfolded the story of her family, describing important moments and details, making her remember and relive past moments. Now she could not ignore the worries that overwhelmed her heart. And when he started talking about her family, revealing important points and details, she could no longer ignore this situation. Then chaos began in the casino, where the whispers of temptation, the flickering light of excitement, and the cries of the winners merged in a whirlwind of gambling excitement. Realizing that with Alice coming into the picture, even if everyone except the sect master joined forces against her, Twelve realized that she would still be able to defeat them. At the decisive moment, just when Twelve felt pressure from behind, Alice flashed next to him, suddenly entering the game. Having quoted his own words about the desire to break Jackson's arms, Alice seized the moment, and smiling slyly, reminded him of what he had said. And, as if fulfilling a prediction, Alice mercilessly broke Twelve's arm, emphasizing her determination and impeccable control of the situation. Jackson, perplexed, was slightly shocked, watching the unexpected turn of events and unfairly teetering on the edge of his expectations. The main character was afraid to imagine how this raging anger raging around would be directed directly at him, making his heart beat even faster with anxiety. Lolita realized that with Alice here, the manager would not be able to kill Jackson, and this freed her from the shadow of fear that had shrouded her heart. Twelve felt it was unfair that he had such a strong wife who could stand up for Jackson and change the course of events in this dangerous game. The seventh entered the casino, bringing with him a sense of mystery, his appearance slowing down time and adding an aura of mystery to the air. Wasting no time, the seventh immediately ordered assistance to the twelfth, placing pieces on the chessboard to change the course of the game. He addressed Jackson politely, asking about his game plans for the day anticipating the moment when passion and fate would intertwine in their favor. As if showing his cards, he said that his wife deeply hates gambling, so he just wants to try his luck at this moment. Clarifying that his desire was simply to try his luck, the man suggested using dice as an excellent choice, creating an atmosphere of unpredictability and fun. The program asked the guy to add intrigue and offered him luck pills, promising that their effect would last two hours opening a new chapter in their gambling adventure. With the good luck pill in hand, Jackson and the seventh man walked into the room, as if in an encrypted space where every moment promised to be filled with surprises and excitement. Confident of losing by 10,000 silver, the man knew that neither his family nor Bright Moon Academy could protect him from the consequences of gambling this time. At this time, from somewhere in the unknown distance, the girl was screaming for help. Her desperate cries penetrated the walls and mixed with the tense atmosphere inside the room. The guy tried to calm her down, saying that despite her screams, no one could save her, foreshadowing the dark shades of mystery that could cover everything around her. In addition, he noted that she was extremely stubborn, emphasizing her character and resilience, which seemed to be indestructible even in a crisis. At this tense moment, Lolita entered the room bringing into the room a share of mystery and hope for unraveling the mysterious events. Lolita, revealing her determination, stopped the girl with a sharp blow and sternly ordered her to leave, instilling order and restoring control in a tense situation. The guy, clearly recognizing Lolita, involuntarily expressed surprise and asked how she ended up here, trying to unravel the mystery of her appearance in this complicated story. Lolita reported that Jackson was already at the casino, 
while pointing out that the guy was still here and engaged in violence against girls, as if exposing the dark secrets that were hidden within the walls of the establishment. Lolita explained that this time Jackson is in company with Alice, emphasizing that now the guy will not be able to collect his debt from him, introducing a new element of intrigue into their complicated plot. Indifferent to who came, the guy realized that while in the casino, he should not even think about winning, calling for unbridled immersion in the gambling atmosphere. Following this, the guy instantly received a strong blow right in the face. Someone decisively put an end to his indifference, introducing an unpredictable twist into the plot. Angry, Lolita remembered how last time the guy claimed that his plan was a win-win, but Jackson was still alive, raising doubts about his strategy and intentions. After calming the girl down, Jackson assured her that this time she could relax, emphasizing the change in circumstances and his intention to support her in this situation. Jackson explained that the casino always wins, and the seventh has always remained a reliable ally, never letting them down, giving the impression that luck is always on their side. The subordinate hurriedly ran up to the guy and reported that everything was going wrong, a harbinger of an impending crisis inside the casino. He insisted that the guy should go and see for himself, as if challenging the secrets and problems that could unfold within the establishment. As it turned out, Jackson won as much as 100,000 silver coins at their casino, dealing an unforeseen blow to the financial plans of the establishment. Lolita claimed that Alice was complicit in deceiving Jackson, revealing dark secrets and maintaining suspicions of betrayal. The guy believed that this was a misunderstanding, because if it was the seventh, then he probably won 100,000 rather than lost, introducing his share of doubt into the solution of the mysterious situation. Arriving, the guy heard disappointing news. Young Jackson had to pay as much as 7.5 million. The sudden turn of events added drama to the atmosphere of the casino. Instantly, the guy almost fainted upon hearing about the unexpected amount, the financial pressure dealing a heavy blow to his consciousness. Of course, the furor caused by this unexpected news immediately gathered many people around the guy, creating a center of attention and anxiety in the casino. In addition to everything, the main character also mocked them, declaring that all this was boring and uninteresting, giving the situation a shade of defiant indifference and sarcasm. Jackson declared that enough was enough for today, demanding payment and emphasizing his determination to end the situation. After refusing to pay Jackson, the man regretted it, realizing the possible consequences and shedding light on his own mistakes. Alice asked if they wanted to force him to gamble until he lost all his money, raising the possibility of violence and gambling. Lolita got angry with the guy and asked how this could be, because he claimed that his plans were ideal, revealing a contradiction between what was said and reality. He silently looked into Lolita's eyes, begging her to calm down, and added that he would not allow her to leave, because the path of simple understanding was always open to them, although dark forces might be lurking in the shadows, ready to devour him. Lolita sighed, claiming that this was impossible, because it seemed to her that Alice suspected her, and she was sure that she would never dare to do this. Lolita assured him that she would think of something, but he realized that he had better figure out a way to survive the young master's wrath, otherwise the consequences could be irreversible. A guy approached the couple and asked if they planned to leave immediately after winning just a few games. Offering to play a few more times, he expressed a desire to see his unique abilities in action. Jackson experienced an incredible shock when he learned that a high-ranking leader of the Plum Blossom sect had come to him, as if something mysterious and important had burst into his familiar world. The main character introduced an urgent demand into the conversation, to pay him the 7.5 million owed provided that after this operation there is still money left in the casino, he agrees to continue his gambling. Seeing no point in continuing the game, he understood that further moves were pointless if it was impossible to pay out the winnings. Approaching the head, they asked vaguely what they should do in this situation. Alice was shocked, for this 7.5 million represented three years of income for her entire family, which made her realize the magnitude of the stakes in their game. The head, losing patience, suddenly grabbed the man by the neck, expressing his indignation and determination in this tense moment. Alice and Jackson, succumbing to curiosity, eagerly awaited how the further course of events would unfold after the leader grabbed the man by the neck. The leader, expressing a clear intention, was ready to take extreme measures without hesitation and kill the man right on the spot. 
he explained that the seventh used the name of their sect, but was not a member of it, violating the sacred principles and becoming a traitor to the Plum Blossom sect. This implied that the debt was now a matter between the guy and the seventh, and if he wanted to get his money, he would have to extort it directly without linking the casino to it. Jackson, in bewilderment, could not understand what kind of circus this man had organized here. The head noted that the casino always pays its debts, but warned that if someone decides to act dishonestly, the consequences will not be for her, but for that person. Jackson boldly announced that he would soon open courses outside the casino, offering those who wished to learn the art of gambling in the open air, promising to unravel the secrets of luck in the world of gambling. Of course, excitement filled everyone's hearts when Jackson announced the opening of the courses. Everyone admired the idea and looked forward to future moments of learning to gamble under his wise guidance. Suddenly a strong man appeared, breaking through the crowd, and with visible determination, announced that he had been informed that there was trouble in this place, disturbing public order. Without wasting any time, he clearly warned them that under his strict supervision it would be impossible to create anxiety. The foreshadowing of the consequences was immediately in the air. The leader instantly felt fear as he looked at the general, whose imposing figure filled his heart with anxiety. Jackson, with an ironic smile, dubbed the general a tin can and, without hiding his amazement, asked who he really was. The general flared up in anger upon hearing these words, his inner fire flaring up, creating an atmosphere of unshakable rage around him. Stating that he needed help to detain this man, the general turned to those around him with a request to intervene in the situation. According to the law, those who extort other people's property are punishable by imprisonment for a term of three to ten years. In more serious cases, possible imprisonment for a longer period is provided. Jackson couldn't help but notice that these laws sounded surprisingly familiar, like echoes of legal norms with which he had already dealt in the past. The guy asked a logical question. Why should the river patrol worry about a casino and protecting it, especially catching crimes among families and who they are trying to please with this? At this moment his gaze went to his wife. Alice categorically informed the general that events in the city were beyond the scope of his authority, emphasizing the inviolability of power and the competence of local authorities. The Brighton Moon Duchy should be ruled by a duke, and family interference in these matters violates established law and order. Alice firmly stated that she would immediately discuss this issue with the Duke, while simultaneously ordering her not to interfere in the life of her family and sternly warning against possible punishments. Then, with sudden energy, Alice stripped her subordinates of all their swords, thereby regaining control and asserting her power. Jackson stated that the question of his activities, whether honest or dishonest, would be decided by the Duke as a result of a thorough investigation. Jackson mockingly asked the general if he could also be investigated for bribery and acts outside his authority, clearly hinting at possible contradictions in his activities. The leader announced that it was just a small gambling debt, and the question arises as to why they need to raise this issue with the authorities. Stating that the amount of debt was too significant, the head proposed drawing up debt obligations, trying to find a compromise and resolve the issue without government intervention. Jackson felt that he was unable to understand what the point of all this was, since all these intrigues and debt obligations seemed useless and hopeless to him. When the head will pay, and how he will pay, even if he pays, all this can be solved with one murder. Jackson heard about the need for bail in such situations and learned that he would have to post a $100,000 bail, adding even more complexity to an already confusing situation. Of course, after this the head flared up with anger. Naturally, after such an incident, the leader's reputation plummeted, infected with indignation and doubts about his leadership qualities. Alice noted that given the amount of money he had taken and the fact that he had been forced to write a promissory note, maintaining the illusion of a prosperous future would now become extremely difficult. Jackson jokingly asked if his wife wanted a new handbag or lipstick, assuring that he was ready to buy whatever he wanted. She chuckled, asking if he was celebrating too early and said that her family didn't like gamblers, and when her father returned, he would probably be unhappy. Alice seemed to explode with indignation as he boldly approached, her anger so palpable that there was an electric tension in the air, ready to explode at any moment. Jackson asked with a hint of irony if she had finally fallen in love with him, playing on the edge of a joke and causing a ripple in her emotions. After such an unfortunate statement from the guy, 
he was quickly driven out onto the street, perplexed by his inappropriate behavior. Jackson began to beg her, claiming that it was too cruel to throw him away, and begged her to let him back in, hoping for forgiveness. Alice realized that she had made a mistake in forgetting how sneaky he could be, for appearances often mask a person's true face. Suddenly Alice realized that she had not noticed when and how Lolita had disappeared, and a quiet warning bell sounded in her soul. The girl, observing the guy's irritation, dared to ask if she liked the tea, implying that this might be the reason for his dissatisfaction. As it turned out, this entire episode took place inside one of the richest families of Bright Moon, and the main character was the young mistress of the family. The guy replied that he was ready to drink her tea every day, demonstrating his willingness to reconcile and neutralize tension in the relationship. He explained that he was simply annoyed by Jackson's uselessness, pointing out the source of his irritation and expressing his dissatisfaction with his behavior. The girl expressed the opposite opinion, believing that if he is able to win 7.5 million silver in a day, then he can hardly be considered useless. The guy claimed that he was simply lucky all the time, having managed to win the magnificent heiress of the dukedom and accumulate a huge fortune. The girl, to be honest, felt slightly offended, since even the guy admitted that Alice was an unsurpassed beauty. The guy began to explain that he didn't care about her beauty, because the only thing that mattered to him was that he had her. Knowing that she was constantly being compared to Alice, the guy came up with a plan on how they could win this situation and show that they were not inferior. He offered to seduce a girl who was interested in Jackson and steal the promissory note, thus earning not only money, but also demonstrating that the beauty of the duke's daughter could not be compared with Alice. Jackson expressed his complaints hesitantly, claiming that the blow from Alice was not only strong, but also left a clear mark on his physical, and possibly, emotional state. He expressed amazement as before he even crossed the threshold, he was already feeling nervous and gaining anger points after Alice's strong blow. Jackson's face showed a surprised reaction as he realized the extraordinary power and impact of this incident. Imp Jason jumped out as if out of nowhere and quickly walked towards him, ready to listen to complaints and stories about what happened. He said that what happened in the casino had already become known to everyone, and the lady was thinking about how best to kill Jackson. Jackson asked Jason to go and find a house because he needed to stay there for a few days to get away from his growing problems. He added that the first lady came to his defense and appreciated his praise, so the lady is not as angry with him as before. Jackson demanded his money back and noted that next time it was necessary to start with this, pointing out the need for preliminary agreements. And it was at that moment that he discovered Alice in front of him, creating additional tension in the air. Her appearance gave the situation a new twist. Alice explained that she was simply stating the facts and did not intend to embellish his situation. Mom decided not to continue the proceedings and only said that he would have to rewrite the family rule as many as 1,000 times, claiming that this would be his fine. He was left in complete shock when he heard that he needed to rewrite the family rule as many as 1,000 times, and his mind was dizzy with a huge number that seemed almost impossible. This unexpected punishment seemed to tear the ground out from under his feet and forced him to rethink the whole situation. What bothers her most is the fact that since they returned from the casino, Lolita has not appeared, creating a shadow of mysterious absence and raising unrest in her heart. Jackson is sure that since she cares so much about him, it means that soon he will become a real husband to her, something more than just a temporary partner. Jackson made Jason guilty of rewriting the rules, shifting his responsibilities to him. The system warned that since the number of rage points exceeded 100,000, the alphabetic keys on the keyboard were unlocked, allowing access to new features. A now tired Jackson wondered what the alphabet key was that was unlocked after reaching 100,000 rage points. It is not clear for what reasons, but his facial expression changed dramatically, causing bewilderment and curiosity among those around him. At this time, a strange man was sitting not far from him, constantly directing his gaze at him, creating the feeling that he was under strict surveillance. When the elderly man fixed his gaze on him, he became uncomfortable, as if under the influence of someone strange. As always, according to tradition, the guy took part in the lottery, remaining in the hope of luck and unknown opportunities that winning could bring. Jackson received an item called Loving Eyes, leaving him confused and wondering what it could mean. The girl began to explain that when someone looks at this object called with loving eyes, 
they experience all the joys of childbirth. This object works regardless of gender and works for 30 minutes after looking at it. Jackson already had an idea in his head on how to use it. The girl also could not understand why he was looking at her with such an expression on his face, which aroused some anxiety and curiosity in her. Jackson was interested in the question of whether she could give birth to many sweet and obedient little systems, and funny images of this unusual idea flashed through his mind. Under such circumstances, he felt that he would become much stronger, and perhaps this would open up new opportunities and prospects for him. Jackson realized that if he applied this during battle, it could greatly help him achieve his goals and strengthen his position. Just then, a masked stranger burst into the room, creating sudden tension and forcing Jackson to be vigilant. Of course, Jackson was shocked by what he saw when a masked stranger suddenly burst into his room, causing mixed feelings of fear and surprise. The stranger immediately began attacking him with knives, unleashing an unexpected and violent fight that forced Jackson to act at full capacity. Luckily, none of the knives hit him, and Jackson was able to escape danger by quickly responding to the stranger's attack. Now it was the protagonist's turn to attack, and Jackson, gathering his strength, responded to the attack, ready to defend himself and act. The enemy had almost reached Jackson, creating a sense of imminent threat, and the fight became uncompromising. Their battle clearly promised to be difficult, and the tension in the air increased with every moment instilling anticipation of the unknown and possible changes in the course of the clash. The girl was surprised that the guy was able to destroy her armor with one blow, leaving her embarrassed and defenseless against his skill in battle. Of course, he was surprised when he saw Lolita in front of him, and this moment stopped him in his struggle, creating excitement and misunderstanding in his soul. He asked if she was really so evil that she wanted to kill him, trying to understand the reasons for her sudden appearance in this fight. Lolita became angry when he called her an old acquaintance, expressing her displeasure and indignation at the comparison. Jackson then asked if they had spent one night together, hinting at a possible past and relationship between them. The girl's nerves could no longer stand it, and she decided to attack the guy, showing her determination and readiness to defend herself. The blow was so strong that the guy flew several meters away from her, falling to the ground under the force of her attack. Fortunately, Jackson was able to stay on his feet after the powerful blow, demonstrating his endurance and strength in this fight. She realized that he had reached the third rank. She didn't think that he was pretending all this time, but he was only a third rank, and in her opinion, he would still die today under any circumstances. He said that his abilities don't stop there, hinting that he still has something that could change the course of events. She promised to cut out his tongue, expressing her rage and determination to take revenge for his words. She then started attacking him with knives again, trying to harm him and force him into a helpless position. One of the knives did hit him, and he fell to the floor, feeling pain and loss of control over the situation. Lolita said that he doesn't even know how to fight, and he's just a common piece of trash, expressing her disdain for his fighting skills. Rising from the floor, the protagonist showed a strong gaze and determination as he prepared to retaliate, clearly showing that his inner fire had only intensified, causing Lolita to feel growing anxiety, realizing that a more serious opponent was standing in front of her. She asked if he could look beyond her, expressing her irony and calling his attention to the possibility of a broader view. To his surprise, Jackson replied that he was content to look at her, remaining determined and unshakable. And then the girl felt something strange inside herself, as if her inner instinct was telling her that something important was happening. It is not clear for what reason, but her stomach suddenly began to swell, as if she was pregnant, and this unexpected physiological moment added mystery to the situation. And as it turned out, that's exactly what happened. Jackson made her pregnant, causing surprise and shock on both sides at this moment of intense combat. Jackson began to speak demanding that she confess who sent her, trying to uncover the mystery of who was behind her attack. The protagonist then asked if she was afraid of death, raising the question of her resilience and preparedness for the possible consequences of her actions. He said that in this case he would undress her and throw her out into the street, allowing the whole city to enjoy this spectacle, expressing his readiness for radical measures. Lolita, hearing this, was clearly frightened, expressing her alarm at possible threats and humiliations. He said that she already had few clothes, and if she did not speak, he would simply start tearing them, 
emphasizing his willingness to use violence to achieve his goals. Lolita told him to get ready, because there wouldn't even be bones left of him, expressing her readiness to respond to threats and show her strength. And these strange tentacles made of hair suddenly began to approach the guy, creating a mysterious and frightening sight. Then completely incomprehensible things began to happen, adding mystery and mystery to what was happening leaving behind questions and fear of the unknown. And then Jackson realized that the situation was becoming dangerous, sensing an approaching threat and an inexplicable force. He was only interested in why she became like a jellyfish. The questions that arose only added to the mystery of this strange and dangerous transformation. Lolita angrily stated that she wanted to grind all his bones into dust, expressing her rage and determination to cause him severe bodily harm. The two then began to fight, deploying their unique abilities and using all their strength to defeat each other in this intense fight. Still, the guy was unlucky, and Lolita was able to wound him right in the shoulder, causing a storm of pain and aggravating the current situation. Tauntingly, the girl asked if Jackson was in pain, expressing her superiority at that moment and adding mockery to his suffering. At this time, Alice was knocking on the door, creating an unexpected turn in events and bringing a new element to the already established picture. Alice realized that Jackson was there, realizing that her presence was becoming a key point in unraveling what was happening and the possible resolution of the conflict. It was because he was distracted that Lolita was still able to strike him, emphasizing the importance of remaining vigilant in such dangerous situations. Realizing that she would have problems, she decided to leave the place and said that next time she would definitely kill the guy, leaving behind a shadow of uncertainty and threat. Entering the room, Alice asked what happened, demonstrating her concern and willingness to understand the situation. Jackson was glad to see Alice. In her appearance, he found support and hope for resolving the problems that had arisen. It was clear from the expression on Alice's face that she was beginning to worry, and she immediately began to wonder what had happened, showing attention to detail and a willingness to help. And Jackson gradually began to lose consciousness, remaining in the fight against his injuries and fatigue from what had happened. The system reported that someone channeled cold energy into his body and saved his life, leaving behind the mystery of the benefactor in this mysterious story. Then he realized that it was Alice, realizing her important role in his salvation and the possible unraveling of the mysteries associated with cold energy. This is the first time he almost died. Apparently, money is not the most important thing in the world, but power plays a much more important role in life. The system said that, in fact, Luck is the most important thing, and by the way, he reached the second stage of the third rank, emphasizing the role of chance and his personal progress in this world. Jackson, cursing fate, realized that he had to rise higher, become stronger, in order to one day take revenge on Lolita for the insults that she brought into his life. Jackson, like a thundercloud, directly and uncompromisingly rested on Alice's chest. Lightning of retribution flickered in his eyes, and his heart beat rhythmically filling him with determination. The main character, feeling guilty, immediately began to apologize to the all-consuming gaze, explaining that he did not want to cause damage intentionally, trying to defuse the tense situation with his words. Alice, a fifth-level cultivator, looked at Jackson in bewilderment, not understanding how he could survive, because his strength seemed too insignificant to her in comparison with her high level. Jackson hurriedly explained that the reason was simply Alyssa's stomach pain, and when she arrived, he immediately left, wishing her a quick recovery. Alice admitted that she had long suspected Lolita, but the mystery of who was behind her remained unsolved. She wondered, puzzled, why Lolita had attacked Jackson. And even if he had a stomach ache, for a rank 5 cultivator it seemed like just a trifle, an insignificant ailment not worth the attention of a real fighter. At this time, Lolita lay powerless on the bed, puzzled as to why the pain did not subside, and her mind weaved complex patterns trying to uncover the mystery of this inexplicable painful torture. The man could no longer restrain himself, and told his boss that the girl's moans were embarrassing him to the limit, awakening something inevitable in him. Lolita felt aggressive towards Jackson because of the sharp differences in their views, as if their disagreement created an invisible barrier that filled the air with tension and a storm of emotions. The leader announced that Lolita had failed to commit a personal assassination, forcing the family to tighten up their defenses, making the task of assassination much more difficult and dangerous. 
Lolita decided that it would be best to tell the whole truth to the young master, confident that he would definitely take action and put an end to Jackson once and for all. Meanwhile, Jackson was lying on the bed, intensely looking at the ceiling, feeling the anxiety that, like a shadow, stretched across his thoughts, a harbinger of coming changes. And Charlotte, in turn, carried him water, each step bringing moments of tenderness at that moment, as if life flowed in their hands like an enchanting stream. Charlotte told the guy to start talking, looking at him with curiosity, while he lay restlessly on the bed, feeling the tension in the air, as if his story could change the course of events and reveal the secrets hiding in their lives. Jackson, naturally, did not catch what she was talking about. Her words seemed to him like an unsolved secret, the essence of which remained beyond his understanding. When the sister told her parents about the situation in the casino, it turned out that she was not there and her absence became like a mysterious dark spot in the story, raising questions and doubts. Jackson asked why she needed this information, since the family rules clearly prohibit participation in gambling, as if he was trying to reveal the secrets of her interest. And precisely because it was forbidden, her interest was aroused, as if she secretly felt an attraction to the dark and unknown, causing internal conflict in Jackson. Jackson decided that he should restrain himself from being attracted to such a girl as if aware that this position could become a dangerous stumbling block in his life. Lucy entered the room and turning to Charlotte, asked why she had burst in here, as if lifting the veil of bewilderment and creating a new point of view on what was happening. At this magical time they were in a deft position, dancing shadows, floating to the rhythm of an invisible melody, shrouded in the mysterious attraction of the night. She explained her presence by saying that she simply wanted to ask how the guy managed to escape from the fifth-level expert. A mysterious note of surprise sounded in her voice. The man categorically stated that Jackson needed to be cured, emphasizing that he should not be distracted, with an undeniable solemnity in every word. The man noted that at least the doctor would not be groped like some old man, expressing surprise that the situation seemed to have its limits and boundaries. Oscar, with a hint of bewilderment, asked if this was how one should behave when asked for help, as if the question conveyed a caring concern about how to do the right thing. Their relationship was clearly strained, and there was an invisible energy in the air, ready to explode or dissipate at any moment, creating an overwhelming atmosphere of uncertainty. Jackson was amazed to learn that the family had invited Oscar. Surprise and curiosity flashed in his eyes, because he had not expected such a turn of events and now he had to unravel the mystery of this invitation. Lucy introduced Oscar, claiming that he was a doctor of extraordinary talent who could cure Jackson. Her words sounded hopeful, like a magical story into which they were all immersed together. The man remained despondent after his meeting with Oscar, his face expressing obvious dissatisfaction and disappointment, as if the meeting had become an unexpected turn that mixed up his routine. The main character, puzzled, dared to ask the doctor if he was having an affair with his mother-in-law. The question sounded a mixture of curiosity and mockery, as if he was testing the limits of his sense of humor in this unusual situation. She only answered that in her youth everything happened, and in these words a past full of mystery sounded, as if the ancient whisper of time was awakening in every memory. Then Oscar began to carefully feel the guy's pulse, his hands quietly exploring the beat of life. He read the secrets written in every heartbeat. Oscar said that he was lucky to come under the care of a fifth-rank expert and survive, and to recover 80 to 90 percent is, according to him, a very difficult, but amazing luck. Jackson expressed concern for his younger brother. So much time has passed, there must be some results, and time has become a pressing issue. Oscar assured that everything would be resolved, but added that the treatment was paid. His words conveyed the inevitable shadow of worries and financial difficulties. At that moment, Jackson raised some kind of bra above him. The moment became a mysterious theater in which an unknown drama was played out. Oscar, to be honest, was surprised that the guy suddenly gave him a random bra. At this point the concern turned into an unexpected gift, covering their meeting with mysterious humor. Jackson said that this was his mother-in-law's pilot, and if Oscar was in doubt, he suggested looking at the quality and materials of the bra. This unusual gift revealed a story of mixed feelings and surprising connections. The doctor apparently liked Lucy from the Chu family. His gaze reflected a mysterious affection, and an unknown flower of feelings blossomed in the doctor's heart. 
Oscar said that he had already found a way to remove the seal from him. His words sounded with a touch of hope and determination, promising a solution to the intricate mysteries. But he only lacks the fleeting lotus, the divine medicine among all medicines, and finding it will be very difficult. He was faced with the task of finding the rarest treasure in the world. Jackson said that money was not a problem and asked where to find it, his words sounding like he was willing to make any sacrifice to bring his brother to healing. Oscar was surprised, because Jackson really believed that he could be bought with money, and this misunderstanding sounded a bitter note, as if the souls of two worlds collided in this moment. The fleeting lotus blooms once every millennium. One petal of this divine flower can help a person rise one step regardless of rank. The wisdom of eternal possibilities resounded in this rare phenomenon. Oscar was very annoyed that the doctor was constantly looking for profit. His anger resented the indifferent desire for personal gain in a world full of unknown secrets. And now there was only one thing left for him, after which he handed the porn magazine to the doctor. At that moment the mixture of irony and surprise became the unpredictable course of his game. Oscar was slightly confused as to what it was, and a look of confusion flashed across his eyes as he witnessed the sudden turn in this unusual scene. When the doctor opened the magazine, he was struck by this so-called beauty. A moment arose within the pages where aesthetics met an unexpected feeling. The man said that it was too exciting, and there was frankness in his words, a sudden emotional reaction to an unusual moment. Jackson asked again if the doctor knew where to find the lotus. His voice sounded insistent and hopeful for the key to healing. The doctor said that he had heard rumors that during the opening of the dungeon a fleeting lotus would bloom, but his healing depended on Jackson. These words conveyed a mystery and responsibility for the upcoming event.